Good evening. Uh, okay, well, I'm, I don't see the recording, oh. but there it is. And we've got uh, everybody on board. Good. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Town of Commission, regular Town Commission meeting for April 13th, 2021. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Yes, Mayor. Mayor Burkett? Here. Vice Mayor Paul? Here. Commissioner Sansauer? Here. Commissioner Kessel? Present. Commissioner Velasquez? Here. Thank you, Mayor. You have a quorum. Okay, good. Um, before we start, I want to clarify something that uh, some have been making an issue of. And that is the fact that uh, the uh, discussion time for some items had been reduced to one minute as opposed to three. Couple points. Number one, everybody still gets to speak for three minutes at Good and Welfare. Number two, um, I do occasionally reduce the speaking time for speakers to one minute when there are a lot of speakers lined up to speak. But what I also say is that if everybody wants to go around one more time and they wanna hear more from the speakers, that's up to the commission, okay? So the point is, is yes, I have reduced the time that some speakers get to speak only on agenda items not on good and welfare, but only when it's very crowded and only subject to us going around again. So it's a way for us to get through all of the speakers at least once. And then if the commission wants to go around one more time, I'm more than happy to go around one more time. In any event, that's what we're gonna do tonight. Commissioners, do you have any additions, deletions or linkages? Eliana. Yes, I want to respond to that. Um, I've, I've, I think I've already spoken. I think people have spoken to ethics already. We, citizens are entitled to meaningful contributions to these public meetings. Our town code is three minutes. It is not okay to restrict it to under three minutes. Technically, it says up to three minutes. Everyone has always, for 10 years that I've been going to meetings, everyone was sick of hearing me talk for three minutes on every issue, and yet I was allowed to do so under the prior mayor. Let me, let me stop you for a second and, and ask Jose to start the clock at two minutes now since you've been talking for a minute. Go ahead. It's not been a minute. I'd like three full minutes now. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. Keep so, going. Okay. Residents feel very strongly that they have three minutes that is protected under the current code, that is protected under, uh, under, under Florida ethics, provides residents with a reasonable amount of time to contribute. It is not okay, especially when someone is pretending to be the champion of speech to speech. The last meeting was not at all crowded. There were hardly any speakers. Watching it was really heartbreaking for me to watch that happen. I missed a meeting because I have a health situation in my family that's been very serious. And I'm going to actually have to excuse myself later in this meeting to deal with it. But it is really upsetting and it is something that residents will not stand for. And I will certainly not let happen. We're not going to limit residents. If we don't want to sit here and listen to them, then we shouldn't be sitting here. We should not have run for office. Every resident is entitled to three minutes. And they're also allowed to get more time if the majority of the commission says they can have more time. So it doesn't depend on who's talking. It depends on um, if the commissioners decide that they want to let them talk. Everyone needs to be held to the same three minutes, including you, Mr. Mayor. And I noticed that you keep going. On the last meeting, I was timing it. You were talking for double the amount of time that everybody else was. Everyone's allowed three minutes. That's the rule. That's what ethics requires. That is what the residents deserve. And I'm not going to be part of anybody or, or condone any, any changes to that. So tonight and every meeting needs to be three minutes per resident um, per topic for the agenda items. And then they also get an additional three minutes during good and welfare. And again, it's, this is not a convenient job. It's not about rushing through things. It's about giving people meaningful time, meaningful time to contribute to the dialogue and for us to listen, genuinely listen and answer their questions. Thank you. Okay, anybody else want to comment on that, Charles? Thank you, Commissioner Salazar, and thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think that one minute is appropriate for the discussion items. Um, I think that it should be tied to um, us continuing 
to open democracy once we go back to town hall by having hybrid meetings going forward. Um, I think hybrid meetings are, are, are the way forward. I think Zoom has been revolutionary in that it's allowed people to contribute and add to our democracy and the dialogue, uh, regardless of where they're from. Um, and um, I do think that once, when we have this greater participation, there is, a, there is the pressure on the time and, um, and our agenda and what's doable. And I would like to get through discussion items rather than not. So that's why I, just, I, uh, I always have continued to support three minutes for ordinances and for resolutions. Um, and then there is, the, um, there is, of course, the good and welfare where they can talk about anything they want, um, preferably something that's not on the agenda because I think that's what it was designed for originally. But I'm not threatened by the one minute. I'm not threatened by one minute for me um, when it comes to discussion items because we can always go around again. And, um, and if there is a, an ethics violation, then that should be pursued. That's the right of the public to, if they can, if they think that I'm wrong, then they can prove me wrong. And, and I'm, I'm fine with that too. Um, but uh, that said, I'd actually like to, um, you know, since we're not really specifically on this topic, um, I'd like to make a motion that last week when I put forward my um, proposal for the town manager to integrate smart goals and assessments up front for quality control and quality resolution, that mm -hmm. we actually um, make, that I make a motion that the town manager uh, formally integrate that and continue to do so because I already see that in a lot of his documents for which I'm grateful. Okay, thank you, Charles. Anybody else? You already spoke, Eliana. Put your hand down, please. Nellie, go ahead. Um, hi, good evening. Um, I just wanted to add to all this. I I don't I've never had a problem with any resident discussing any on any topic. And as a matter of fact, to me, it is very important that all residents get their time because residents come first. However, there is a time and a place for every single item. If we are talking about a particular item, the resident needs to be um, stay on topic. And unfortunately, um, if we're gonna really start naming names here, um, your son, Mr. Epstein, has not been staying on topic, Eliana. So I'm sorry to say, but it is very disruptive that someone's talking about a specific topic and then somebody comes on and started calling people liars and stuff like that. That's disruptive. And it's not on the topic. And it has nothing to do with that topic. When the good and welfare comes around, he can say whatever he wants, um, you know, and that's okay. But when you're on a on a specific topic, I think that we need to stick to that particular topic and stay on track and not have a disruption of that kind, especially from a minor. Okay, so it's it's very, I mean, I would never have my child out there disrespecting adults. So I'm sorry, but I don't agree with um, that kind of speech in a particular item of conversation. Like I said, when it's good and welfare, he can say whatever he wants. He can stand on his head if he wants. I don't care. That's what good and welfare is there for. But there is a time and a place for everything. And I think, honestly, there needs to be a level of respect because nobody is disrespecting any resident. And I would never allow a resident to be disrespected because that's not what we're here for. That's not what I ran for commission. I ran to make sure that our residents get a top-notch service and that everything that that our town needs gets done and that's my priority and that's what I'm here for and that's what I stand for and I will never allow a resident to be shut down for anything that they have to say and that's all I had to say thank you okay anybody else Tina I look forward to passing the civility resolution tonight. I think that we'll uh, handle some of these issues because it's about mutual respect for all. Um, as I said at that last meeting, that in my previous four years on the commission, residents were allowed to speak on every topic and they were given three minutes. Unless it, when we had a full room, we did have to sometimes limit it to two minutes, but it was across the board. Everyone was treated the same. And so I think that's what people expect now, and that's what we need to deliver on. Uh, I do have a uh, um, order of business, so <laughs> if you want me okay. to move forward with that. Yeah, go ahead. Great, thank you. So uh, I'd like for item 9E to be handled by the uh, town manager. 
So I'd like to remove it from the agenda and give that to the town manager to work on. 9E. Right, it's the FPL uh, solar together. Uh, I, I okay, think is, there, is there anybody that objects to that? Okay, so be it, go ahead, anything else? No, that's all. Okay, thank you. All right, I just close on that subject by saying, um, Commissioner Salzhauer, I, I know you've been busy with a personal issue and you haven't been to several meetings. And I will say that we haven't had the kinds of explosions in the past during those meetings. So I'm hopeful that we can conduct this meeting in a respectful, tactful way in any event. Um, keep that in mind with your next comment, please. Go ahead. Absolutely. I'm happy to be respectful. I'm happy to, I'm going to be honest possible tonight. And I think, by the way, I only missed one commission meeting. That's it. That's all I've missed. Um, and what the last meeting went very well or smoothly, I guess, because no one tried to speak up. And when Vice Mayor Paul spoke up, you shut her down and okay. you pulled down. You and see. so me deciding to, dis to disagree with you or to correct the record is not, it's not being a, uh, it's not a negative thing. I was elected to also represent these re our residents and I was elected to also speak the truth. And so if I hear someone saying something that is not accurate, I will, and I deserve, and I am, I should get an opportunity to correct the record because there is such a thing as an absolute truth. The prior commission gave everyone three minutes to talk. And that's what we need to do tonight is give every resident three minutes to talk. And when we change the rules for the meetings, it needs to be very clear that everyone gets three minutes to talk because that is the most protected right is for our residents to be able to voice their thoughts and opinions and to contribute. And, you know, they should absolutely agree with, with Commissioner Velasquez. They need to stay on topic, but whether or not somebody is respectful or not is a very um, ambiguous term. And I think we had prior meetings where even, you know, even you, Mr. Mayor, was very, uh, are very abrupt or maybe could be considered disrespectful to the prior mayor where the police almost escorted you out, but that was within your rights. And you didn't have a problem with that at the time. So we have to be, when the shoe's on the other foot, we have to have thick skin and we have to sit here. And when other people have problems with us, that's what we got elected to do. We just have to sit here and say, okay, I hear you, you're being heard. I'm not taking it personally. I'm, I'm not asking for anyone to do anything, you know, there's not this level of respect that has to come with the territory. You're elected to do a job and some people will like it and some people won't, but I, 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 we need to give everyone three minutes and that needs to be, uh, we all need to agree on that moving forward because you can't just cut down the number of minutes because that is an ethics problem. Up to three minutes. No hey, okay, yeah, well, let, 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 let me just correct something you said and Tina <coughs> confirmed tonight. Basically, the three minute rule exists Okay, unless it's very crowded. Practically speaking, if we've got a lot of people, it's impossible. So, you know, you're you're kind of on your high horse tonight. And it, it's just it's the realistically, we promised, we promised to have the meetings end at 11. My job is to run an efficient, productive meeting. And I'll tell you what, one day when you're the mayor, you get to decide and take responsibility for running efficient productive and respectful meetings, okay? And that's the way it's gonna be. Charles, go ahead. You don't get to speak out of turn, Eliana. Sure. You need to raise your hand and stop interrupting. Go ahead, Charles. Well, so I made a motion to, um, to direct the town manager to um, continue to integrate the quality control, quality assurance guidelines of the, of the proper assessments um, and using SMART goals. And I'm wondering if there's a second. Okay, is there a second to that motion? I mean, okay, I, not I, hearing. I would like to read the uh, quality control before. Can, can, can we postpone that to the next meeting, Charles? I'm so sorry. Sure. And you did ask for the materials as well. So yeah, I never um, got it. Provide those to you, then you could review. Thank you. And but I would I definitely, after reading it, would love to be the, the, um, the uh, seconder to that motion. But I Very really like to need, read it first. So if you don't mind, if we could move it to next month, that would be great. Sure, thank you. And then since that's not being considered, um, I propose to move up my items HH and II, um, which are timely based on the prior meeting that we had. Um, it's uh, 
HH is parking and other, tra other traffic solutions in the business district um, to support local businesses, which a lot of this has been discussed on the periphery and this came out of the DVAC committee. Um, and then the uh, ending the option to contribute to the parking fund in lieu of having the required park parking in the building plans, that now is open to anyone with a new set of building plans um, to, to choose the option to pay into the parking fund. Um, so I think that that's timely too. Okay. I'll second his motion to move those. That's fine with me. Okay, Tina. I just wanted to know where that's being moved to. Yeah, that exactly. That was my next question. <laughs> where, um, where are we putting those? Um, I propose to move it after um, either either to above the mayor's A item or after A, um, before demolition by neglect. I think after A would be good. Okay. Are you okay with that? Yes. Okay. There's a there's a there's a motion to second. Call the question, Sandra. Commissioner Sasar. Yes. Was that a yes? Yes. Commissioner Castle? Yes. Commissioner Velasquez? Yes. Vice Mayor Paul? Yes. Mayor Burkett? Yes. Mayor Lemotion carries. Okay. Good. Um I have I have something that I'd like to Okay, go ahead. Uh, um, on the minutes uh, that we're going to approve for the regular commission meeting from March 9th. Oh, we're not there yet? Oh, sorry. Okay, so let me know so I can make my motion then. Yeah, yeah. Okay, go sorry. Ahead, I would like item, I guess, staff report A on the purchase of land for parks. Can we get that moved up? That would be great. I second that. Which item is that one? It's I don't. It's like A under staff reports. It's just like by itself after the discussion items. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. That's All right. There's a there's a motion to second. Uh, where are we point? putting it? Yes. <laughs> well, where are you putting it? I guess you're moving it to the top. I guess after Charles' stuff. Uh, I, I maybe get if it's it's just a report from the town manager, I guess, right? Then maybe we can get it before we get to the discussion item just to find out, no? Andy, I'm not sure if you wanna um, speak. I think this item was discussed and it was, um, you're supposed to bring it back at a later day. That's why it's under staff reports, but I don't think there's anything there right now. Right, we, we, we've looked and I, and I don't wanna speak out of turn, but we could always put it under number seven and I can just speak you know, briefly to it if you want to. That'd okay, be great. That'd be fun. Okay, staff report. Okay, Andy, so you'll remember to do that. Correct. All right. Okay, here we go. Is there a motion to move the consent agenda? Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, I'll second that. Okay. I'll, yeah, I'll motion to move it. Okay, so go ahead, Sandra. Mayor, if I may, before the consent agenda, we have a legislative update, community notes. Okay. Mario Bailey. Mm -hmm. What What is that? He's, he's the, the lobbyist. Okay. All right. Bring him on then. How about the minutes? When are we doing the minutes? We'll do that after. Oh, okay. I want to make sure that my thing doesn't get. Mayor, if I may. Yes, sir. This is Mario Bailey. He's with Converge Government Affairs uh, Advisors. He's a senior government affairs advisor, and he uh, represents us in Tallahassee and, and, uh, has uh, uh, graciously agreed to come and speak to us if we could get him promoted. There he is. Okay, welcome, Mr. Bailey. Good, good evening uh, and greetings from Tallahassee. I'm in my, as you can see, I'm in my hotel room. So I, I apologize about the background, um, but thank you for having me um, here tonight, uh, Mr. Mayor and Council. I just want to give a, a brief um, update or where we are now. Um, we just started week seven of the legislative session. Um, we started off um, working with your um, with the um, your manager early on. We submitted a appropriation request for Abbott Avenue um, by Representative Geller um, and Senator Pizzo. That item was submitted um, in the House. We 
we received a hearing from the Ag Appropriations Chair. Um, we've been working closely with um, House leadership to get it in the budget, um, where we are now in the budget. During week six of last week, the House and the Senate, they passed their separate budget. Roughly the House passed a net $97 billion budget and the Senate passed a $95 billion budget, $2 billion apart. There are federal relief dollars. Um, there's some discrepancy about how the House and Senate will like to use them. The Senate would like to use them for reserves, water, and infrastructure. The House has said they would like to use those funds for, res for deferred maintenance for schools and state facilities to offset revenue in the transportation fund, to create an emergency prepared response fund, and also some environmental program. We got also some really great news um, last week. The estimating revenue conference um, met. Um, initially, when we were going into session, session we were looking at a, a roughly a two to three billion dollar shortfall. They met yesterday and they've updated all the numbers. They're projecting roughly 1.7 billion in new revenues. Um, I want to talk about a few bills that um, passed um, last week that I believe that are, are important to the the town. The um, resiliency, um, the state resiliency bill, Senate Bill 1954, um, it passed. Um, I think it will be very important to the town. Um, they established a $100 million grant program um, to address flooding, um, sea level rise. And previous years, um, with the exception of last year, all of the water project was vetoed. But the previous year, roughly $50 um, million was spent for the, for the entire state for all water projects. This doubles that, and it only allocates those funds for flooding and resiliency. Um, the it, the um, bill directs DP to create a statewide program where they set up the different criteria. And so we we look forward to um, submitting um, on behalf of the town to that fund, which um, we expect it to um, pass really shortly. A couple of other bills that, um, that um, were heard last week, the online connection of sales tax, this is um, it in, it is currently increasing revenues for the state of Florida. Before online retailers did not have to remit um, the sale tax. Um, and so it created a, a disparity for our um, brick and mortar businesses. So now they have to remit their sale tax. Uh, next important bill, um, vacation rentals. Um, we work very closely with the League of Cities who we partner with um, throughout the session to work uh, on your behalf. Um, we, like the Senate version, Senate Bill um, 522, we're, we're currently opposed to the House um, version. The Senate version, which is moving, um, also, um, it allow us to keep our, our current regulation. Another bill that um, we were happy to see amended um, this week was um, Senate Bill 266 regarding the regulation of home-based businesses. Um, it preempts local governments to um, from regulating um, regulating um, home-based businesses, but there were some changes that were added that we were happy to see that were amended. Um, businesses cannot create noise, vibration, heat, smoke, dust, and other um, nuisances that will um, bother their um, neighbors. Um, there was a, a, a few other bills. We, we track uh, roughly 2,000 bills are, are filed um, each session, and we track them all throughout throughout during week seven, um, this is the last week that we expect the um, committee uh, meeting to, um, take, to pl take place in the House. Um, next week, um, Tuesday is a deadline for committee meetings um, in the Senate. And once those stop, majority of the bills will be dead because they have not received a co committee hearing or they have not went far enough. Um, we are still watching for a lot of language that will be live because they were heard in one committee of reference that can be amended to um, additional bills. There are some um, other um, bills that we're, um, we're monitoring this week. Um, for instance, House Bill 1429, it changed the use for the tourist and um, convention development tax. Um, it allows some of that funding to be used for um, flooding. Um, so there's a, a lot of, um, I think, exciting things that could happen this session. And so week eight, uh, next week, we'll, we'll be a little more clear. We expect the um, budget conference to start really soon. Currently, the House and Senate leadership, they're working together to agree on allocation. And what that means, they they pretty much select how agree on how much money will be spent in each budget silo. Once they agree on those allocation, we'll then go into what's called budget conference. Budget conference, they will work out the difference between all the different 
um, their two budgets, and then they'll produce the final General Appropriation Act, and that will be our final budget. So we have two weeks here left in Tallahassee, um, and you will receive a final report with all of the different bill, what happened. Um, we'll make sure everyone get a copy of that. Um, and my, um, oh, also our chairman, Jonathan Kielman, he was supposed to be with, he, with me tonight, but he um, was called into uh, a meeting with some senators. And so as we're in Tallahassee, we were being kind of pulled um, back and forth, but we are here for you around the clock. So are you, are you our lobbyist? Yes, I'm one of your many lobbyists. So you have a, a team that works with um, Converge Government Affairs. And so I, I serve as one of the leads with um, Jonathan Kielman, who serves as chairman of, of our firm. And the name of your firm is what? Converge Government Affairs. And, and, and go ahead, Tina. Uh, right. I, I thought Fausto Gomez was our um, that's, lobbyist. That's, that's why I was, I was wondering. I thought Fausto was our guy. Is this his company? Sure. So um, Fausto Gomez, he, um, he does the advisory portion of, of our firm. Okay, so it's not it's not Gomez Barker anymore. It's uh, a different firm. Yes, Converge Government Affairs. We work closely. Um, he um, he has an advisory role to our firm where he leads um, some of the direction. Because I I know I sign the checks and the checks get paid to Gomez Barker. Okay. In any event, we'll figure it out. Um, Jason, that probably, was kind of weird. <laughs> It's like, Jason, is he a fraud or something? <laughs> Jason, are you there? What what what's the deal? Uh, yeah, I believe it was uh, sometime a year or so ago that there was a merger, um, so they still operate under uh, multiple entities. Um, so you'll see the email as the converge, but yeah, the bills to come in um, as Fausto Gomez, which I think is like a subsidiary or something like that. I see. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, sir, for your time. Appreciate the update. Lovely. Thank you all for having me tonight. Tina? Yeah, uh, uh, yes. Uh, before you go, Mr. Bailey, um, I, I wanted to ask you about the, thank you for the up, update of the good news, but we didn't, I wanted to also discuss the things we we're concerned with, the um, erosion of home rule. I have a resolution on our um, agenda tonight that addresses some of the uh, House bills and Senate bills that we don't want to see pass. And there are um, two that I uh, that I had omitted because I didn't find out about them till after I had submitted the uh, resolution. And uh, that's uh, HB1, uh, public disorder, and HB263 and SB64 about wastewater discharge. Do you have any updates on how that's going? Sure. And so that has been, House Bill 1 has been seen um, as uh, the number one um, priority of Governor DeSantis. Um, and you don't receive House Bill Number One by chance, and so it was a number one priority also of, of the House. Um, initially, the bill it was not moving in the Senate. Um, Senator Pizzo um, was the committee chairman, and he did not um, place the bill on the agenda. Um, the bill then was moved to was re-referenced out of that committee and moved to the Appropriations um, Committee. We are working with the League of City on this bill. Um, we do not know what will happen with it. Um, we, we are definitely opposed to the bill and we're working, like I said, closely with your senator, with your house, with your, your house member and other um, leaders. Um, hold on, Mr. Bailey, hold, hold on a second. For everybody that doesn't really know what the bill's about, Tina, can you, can you give us a 30 second overview on that? Well, it has many facets to it. It might be good if Mr. Bailey explains that. Because, um, well, I mean, you brought it. You brought it up. Um, yes, I did. I wanted an update from Mr. Bailey, so I, I'm looking for him to provide that for us. Okay. Well, can you give us a 30 second overview, then, Mr. Bailey? Because I, sure. I'm not, I'm not familiar with it. Um, the bill, the bill is very large, but I, the, one of the major issues I think as it relates to local government, um, if you change the your budget as it relates to policing. Um, then your residents could possibly um, sue. The, the larger portion of the bill as it relates to uh, public disorder, um, where it, it, it creates increased penalties um, for the language they use is rioting, and some say protest. Okay, so yeah, I, I'm aware of this now. I'm aware of this. So basically, it, it stops the defunding of the police 
and it increases penalties for rioters. Is that correct? Sure, but there's also a piece that's um, closely related to local governments. Let's say if you you believe that you one year you may, might have a budget challenge and you slightly reduce the budget for police, or 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 you feel you need to shift some things around, and so that with that change, it allows allows for your resident to then um, sue the um, your the local. Okay. Well, government. you know what? Why that's don't you do, do do me a favor? Um, that sounds like a very important bill, and I'm, I don't think we're going to have the time to cover it all. Uh, I'm glad the vice mayor brought it up. Would you please um, email a copy of that to our manager so he can distribute that to each of us? Yes. Because I'd like to know why the governor is supporting it, but uh, Jason, or Senator Pizzo is opposing it. Definitely. I will um, send that uh, to, to the, the manager tonight. Thank you very much. Anything else, anybody? Oh, just one more. If uh, Mr. Bailey could also elaborate on um, HB 263, SB 64, the uh, wastewater um, uh, discharge. Tell, tell us what that's about first before you elaborate on it, and then please go ahead and tell us what you can about it. Well, the point is for Mr. Bailey to elaborate on it for us. Well, that's what I, I that's what I was directing my comments to. Okay, thanks. Sure. Um, that bill, I'm sorry, I... I'm going to have to actually uh, make sure um, cause there's a couple I'm referring to the, the right one. You said HB, sorry, the number again, I apologize. Sure, it's um, wastewater discharge HB 263 and SB 64. I know we I, I know we are working with the league on this bill is by um, Megar is regarding reclaimed water. Um, I will follow up with, with an email because I don't have a specific at the moment, I will follow up with a, uh, an email tonight uh, as it relates to all the specific of the bill. I know that the, um, the town is actually opposed to it, um, and we have been working with the league, but I will follow up with that specific in the email. Um, the town the town is opposed to it? Well, the League, the league of Cities has um, is, is opposed. So usually, okay, well. we, usually we evaluate most of the, the bills. Um, from a lot of time the, the league perspective, but we also look at the we the town like. Well, that's fine. I mean, I just I just want to understand what it is because I'm not sure, quite sure. Has it come before the town, Tina? Are you aware? Uh, no, it's, it doesn't come before the town. It's it's there in the Senate in the House in what? Tallahassee. I can I can read you the I can read it into the record the description of it if you like. Yeah, um, yeah go ahead. Sure. It's wastewater discharge bill heads to House floor. Um, requires certain wastewater utilities to implement plans to eliminate surface water discharges within a short time frame. Unlike the Senate companion, the House bill does not accommodate adverse impacts by local utility customers or technical or environmental feasibility. Um, so uh, basically the league is opposing it and um, uh, yeah, I can well, also- What does it do? It, 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 what, is the, what is the intention of the bill? So the, the intent... Uh, hang, hang, hang on a second. Uh, do you know what the intention of the bill is, Dina? I'm, I'm not fully clear on it. It's about uh, reclaim using the wastewater as, as fresh water. Is that correct, Mr. Bailey? Sure. I, I, they're actually trying to reduce the, the amount of, of... I thought... Let me verify. I think it's... Reducing. Okay, guys, we don't have the time, really. Get, it, get, it, get us the information, Mr. Bailey, and uh, we'll circulate it to uh, educate our elected officials. And then if we need to talk about it next time, we can do that. Anything else, commissioners? All right, Mr. Bailey, thank you very much. Thank you all for your time. Have a good night. Um, is there a motion to move the consent agenda? Nellie, you had an issue on the minutes and I think uh, I did too. Uh, Charles, you had your hand up. You wanna make a motion? Um, I was just gonna make a motion to move the consent agenda forward, yes. I'll, okay, I'll go ahead, Nellie. I'll is there a second? second? Yes. Okay, now discussion. Go ahead, uh, Sandra. I believe that Commissioner Velasquez wants to second it, but she wants to pull the March 9. Oh, right. yes, this is where I can speak. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Sandra. Yes, I want to make sure that um, I want to make a motion to pull the March 9th. F well, no, the, you, what, Charles, you can ask the motion maker to include that in his motion and second. Oh, okay. No, I, I just the portion about the a FPL update, um, which is on page 55. Um, item H, 
Um, I want this to be more specific as to the questions that we asked FPL regarding the undergrounding of the power lines, as there has been statements made that we're going to get free undergrounding when that's incorrect. Um, okay, so, so will, you, sure will, will, you be, a, will you be working with staff to go ahead yeah. and correct that? Uh, yes, I guess And you'll so. send around the proposed language to the uh, elected officials, just so everybody mm -hmm. knows what it says? Yes. Um, I, I sent around, Charles, there was an amendment that I sent around also that I would like to uh, have included in the motion. I think everybody got a copy of that. Um, sure, we can post we can postpone approval of the, those minutes. Um, I do recall that last at last the last commission meeting we also postponed approval of minutes. Um, so I assume well, that now we're uh, now we're approving those. But correct. Ones Go ahead, Son. Go ahead, Sandra. If if everyone if all the members of the commissions review the amendments we emailed and they're okay with it, we could approve the amendments tonight. Okay. So as March nine that we haven't made the amendments yet, so those will correct. Come. All right, so the, the, the ones that don't have the amendments get pulled, and the ones that were changed and circulated can be approved if everybody's okay with it. Did everybody see their, their emails and have any objections to any changes? I have not seen ones that were sent in just recent days, but if it was something that from the prior ones that were, that were circulated, I've seen those. Okay, well, let's do it. Let's make it really easy. Sandra, why don't you pull the, the 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 March 9th minutes that Nellie's talking about, and why don't you uh, pull the minutes where I made changes to uh, to my issue, and then we can recirculate those both once Nellie completes her her proposed changes. Perfect. Is that okay, Charles? Yes, sounds great. Will you incorporate that into the motion, and, and will the seconder accept that? I will. Okay, yeah. Atina, go ahead. Uh, yeah, no, I, I read I read the minutes. I'm fine with everything except, you know, the ones Nellie wants to pull. That's okay. Fine. Well, but, listen, but Charles hasn't. So anyway, so that, oh. Oh, he we'll didn't do it next. Well, I'm I sorry. Didn't any in. No, no, it's all right. It's all right. We, I just want to keep moving. Uh, we're we're yeah. going to pull those two. And the motion is to pull those two and approve the rest. Madam Clerk, call the question, please. Commissioner Velasquez. Uh, yes. That's with me faking out my FPL part, right? That is correct. It was one of the zoning um, workshops, which the mayor had some amendments to. Okay. There will be two. Um, Commissioner Salasauer? She's not here. She's she said she was going to leave. Commissioner Kessel? Yes. Vice Mayor Paul? Yes. Mayor Buchanan? Yes. Here, the motion carries. Thank you. Mr. Manager, do you have a report this month? You just approved the whole consent agenda, so that put us in item 5A. Okay. Oh, okay, good. Oh, that's right. All right. Then we are up to uh, resolutions. That's correct, Mayor. All right, thank you. Then would you please take us through the first resolution, please? Yes. A resolution of the Town Commission of the Town of Surfside, Florida, adopting a civility pledge for elected officials engaged in public discourse, providing for implementation and providing for an effective date on 5A. Dina, everybody's okay. not here. Motion to approve. Uh, I mean, you know, I mean, that I don't know if that's by design, but. Uh, do you want to hear this then after? Let, um, no, no, let's let's go with it because I think that it's happening on purpose probably, but go ahead. You want to make a motion to approve? Motion to approve, yes. All right, is there a second? Yep. All right, Charles, there's a second. Discussion. I know everybody wants to have discussion. <laughs> Who wants to go first? Is there a penalty here? <laughs> they violated it. <laughs> oh, maybe put a couple of dollars in the jar. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Just like when, when you use a swear word, you have to throw it in the That's jar. Amazing. It's, oh, it's five bucks. It's five bucks per interruption. Okay. Come, well, let, is, is that it? No, no, the comments because I certainly have a comment. Um, I, I don't have. I wrote it. I don't have comments. All right. Well, listen. I I want to. I want to thank you, Tina. Um, and I will say that. Uh, listen, you and I don't always agree, but uh, you know. It, for me, our our debates are lively and interesting and fun, and they don't get personal, and they don't get insulting, and they don't get anything. 
all they they are is business, and sometimes it's tough, but it's business. And uh, you know, I I could you you don't interrupt. Charles doesn't interrupt. Nelly interrupts very infrequently now. She's gotten much much better. And uh, the meetings the meetings right now, and, and and again we're sailing right now. It's beautiful. The 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 the. Uh, the, the problem is obvious. So um, let's let's go ahead and I'm sorry. Yes, Madam Clerk. Mayor, um, we have a public speaker. Okay, good. Um, you know, I wasn't quite finished, but uh, we'll get to that. Um, okay. it, it it's refreshing. Um, it's refreshing how smooth and pleasant and productive the meetings are when we don't have. The interruptions, the insults, and by the way, folks, you don't have to talk for your full three minutes every time. Okay, and I know that not any of you do. Okay, and that's also very nice. You say what you have to say. You get in and you get out, and we allow other people to talk. All right, go ahead and bring the speakers in, please. And by the way, what we'll do is we'll. Uh, since this is not good and welfare, we'll we'll set the clock at one minute, and if it's the commission's pleasure to go around again and have additional comments, we'll do that. First speaker will be Joshua Epstein. Joshua, please state your name and address for the record and your comments. Joshua Epstein, 9317, Bay Drive. Since I only have one minute, I think get to the core of this issue. It is what is disrespect and what is a productive forum, what is a lively forum, what is a fun and interesting forum. Well, to you, that is when, I mean, to you, Charles Burkett, that seems to be when there is no discourse and there's nobody arguing. There's no arguments taking place and there's no discussion taking place. But that's not how democracy works. Democracy is discussion and sometimes it's heated discussion. But I mean, I know the Washington Post has a saying, democracy dies in darkness. It seems to be in this meeting, you thrive in darkness, which is not how democracy is supposed to function. This new one minute rule and all of this um, civility pledge. Well, you know, it's not civil lying to residents, using public money in the Gazette, using public forums or to mislead residents, to misrepresent the truth and to omit critical facts from agenda items, and especially agenda items that could talk, cost residents millions of dollars. Greater participation is what makes meetings go round, and that is what makes a successful meeting. It's not the muting of residents, and it's not a unilateral decision to make residents' comments limited, limited to one minute. Disrespect is when you have gross, Thank you, negligence, Mr. Epstein. No, gross Thank negligence for residents' right to speak. That is... Okay. All right, so you had your time now. And again, I just want to make everybody aware that Mr. Epstein is Miss Salzhauer's teenage son. Okay, next speaker, please. Next speaker is Horace Henderson. Horace, please state your name and address for the record and your comments. Good evening, Horace Henderson, 9195 Collins Ave. Um, I am suggesting that there's a $100 fine for the UPC jar. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Henderson. Next speaker, please. I do not have any more public speakers, Mayor. All right. Well, then we'll close that portion of the meeting. And I think we have a motion on the table. Would you please call the roll? <clears throat> Commissioner Salzauer, it's absent. Commissioner Castle? Um, I'm definitely voting yes, uh, but I also didn't get a chance to say anything. So I know I'm sorry. That, uh, well, yeah, that's okay. We're gonna, go, we're gonna go backwards. I'm not gonna call the question. Go ahead, Mr. Commissioner. Sure, and, and it won't be long, but um, you know, I think that something like this is necessary. And I also thank the vice mayor uh, for bringing it forward because um, you know, when we're, when we're caught, and I can speak for myself, when I'm caught in a particular issue, um, it's good to have external checks and balances, um, you know, on my behavior, and um, and I think that's good for all of us, um, not well, not any one particular commissioner or or, um, or any one of us. Um, so I'm grateful for this because it just provides that extra check and balance to maintain a civil conversation that is productive, and um, and when it comes to taking things personally, you know, it's our person, so it's hard for us to judge that. Now, I'm not sure how the town attorney is going to be um, poli policing and enforcing this resolution, but it certainly is good in good spirit. And, um, and I think that therein lies its strength. So if you call the vote, I'm a yes. Okay, has everybody spoken then? Okay, call the roll, please. Commissioner Velasquez. 
Can't hear you, Nelly. Okay, that's good. <laughs> that's good. Same thumbs up, so that's a yes. Vice yeah. Mayor Bob? Yes. Mayor Burkett? No. Yes. yes. Motion carries. All right. We got Commissioner Kessel on the record too, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay, excellent. All right. Well, that's that's good. Um, can you take us through the next resolution, please? Yes, Mayor. Resolution of the Town Commission of the Town of Surge of Florida approving the first amendment to the agreement with Sun Valley Fireworks Manufacturing Corporation for 2021 4th of July fireworks show services, authorizing the town manager to execute the first amendment, providing for implementation and providing for an effective date and in 5B. Thank you. Is there a motion to move that? I'll motion to move okay. it forward. Ne okay, Nelly, you got to talk. Hear me? Yeah, I, okay. Oh, I hear you now. Oh, okay, I, it's very low. It's very low, but I hear you. Go ahead, Charles. You want to second that? Um, yes, and I know that Commissioner Velasquez was uh, was instrumental in, the, in moving this forward. So yes, I'll happily be the second to her first. Okay, good. Um, discussion, please. Anybody? Go ahead, Eliana. You're back after uh, the uh, the last issue here. Go ahead. So first of all, I want to say to the residents, I'm dealing. My son is in the hospital. Okay, my, my, my 12 year old son, I don't want to start crying on a public meeting, but that's who I've been on the phone with, with his doctors and the team. So I'm sorry if it's not convenient for you, Mr. Mayor, that I have to deal with problems that are more serious than whatever you guys were talking about, okay? Because I prioritize this town and this commission. Okay, was that's fine, Commissioner. No, that's I'm not fine. gonna talk because you just accused me of not being committed to this town. And it was because I was so committed to this town that yeah. my son part while you were doing your shenanigans and your flyer and your mailer and your videos are what put him over the edge. So this is on you. And I hope that karma comes back for you at some point. Okay. So that's Okay. So the that, so wait, wait, we just passed a rule about civility. I wasn't we just here. just passed a rule about respect. Okay. And you, you, you have been a champion again and violated it within five minutes. I haven't been here for 20 minutes. I've been on the phone with his doctors and his team, and I okay, have to get Okay, you already off. said that. You already said I, that. So I'm going to give this attention because my son came running out. Joshua came running out and said, they're talking about fireworks. You have to get in there, okay? So I came back. My son is still on the phone. Yeah. I have to go back out there because I want to say for the record how I feel about the subject, okay? The fireworks? Fireworks, yes. That's what we're talking so about, correct? You, you, you came back off the phone from your son to talk about fireworks? Others, because he's talking to my husband now and because my other son came running in and said, mommy, I need you to go back in there because I have two children. I have two children. Well, go ahead. Talk about it. Then talk about it quickly because you should be back on the phone with your child. Going back on in a second. So I'm just going to tell you for the record that I think the fact that we're the only community even talking about fireworks when there's still uh, a moratorium against it, when you don't have permission to do this, to encourage a public gathering at this stage because we're not out of the woods, I think is not is not okay. I'm not comfortable doing it. I'm also not okay with double, almost doubling the cost of it to spend $20,000 when we all said we were fiscally responsible and we wanted to save the town money. All we've done since elected is spend a ton of money. We laid somebody off in town. We cut their livelihood off to save less than 20 grand or something that you want to spend on 15 minutes of polluting the air and the environment. So I'm completely opposed to this. I don't know how anyone can approve this. I don't know how anyone can even talk about this. And the mayor, the, the mayor of Miami-Dade County has not even given permission for people to have these. So to even have this discussion flies in the face of decency, health protocol, and fiscal responsibility. And that's all I have to say. I'm gonna go back to my son now. You all vote how you want. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Um, Charles, and then uh, uh, Vice Mayor. Sure. Um, having talked with the town manager about this um, and, and pointing out the, the issues that, that Commissioner Sazhauer had raised, um, this is in case the, um, the ban is lifted. Uh, we, ha you know, we have a few months. Last year, we canceled our, um, our, um, our fireworks, and you know, rightfully so, and it, it, the gatherings weren't allowed. Um, so, and we did so without penalty uh, by the vendor, even though technically they could have penalized us. Um, this is the third year of the three-year contract. Um, so it's just putting it back in place. So that way, if 
the, um, the county mayor and the county decide that a gathering can be allowed, we would uh, adhere to the county rules, uh, but we would have this in position to, to go forward. Um, my understanding is with 30 days notice, which would be by June 4th, um, we, would, we could pull, pull out and have no, uh, no penalty. Um, and um, the increase in the duration um, for, I think, seven, seven minutes longer of a show for, I believe, $7,000 more, um, that actually um, is pretty much the equivalent of what the, uh, what the vendor could have penalized us with last year and chose not to. Um, so I think that if it is a possibility and the, and the ban is lifted so that we can gather, um, you know, on... Um, safely um, and um, and that's determined. You know, I even asked the town manager if it's possible to do the show without allowing people to gather on the beach because we could still see it from our houses. We could see it from the streets. We could see it from a safe distance out in the public. If, you know, if we don't have to manage people from outside if we're the only one, which is a separate issue. But, um, but I can only imagine that Commissioner Velasquez brought this forward because we've had a real rough year and a half now, right? Um, so in 4th of July will, was canceled last year for us. So if, if, if the ban is lifted and we can do so safely to have a fireworks display, then we do it. But there's no risk here because if it's not lifted, then we're gonna not, we're gonna not owe anything under the contract. So that's why I support this. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Yes, I have to ask why we are expanding the fireworks because we are still uh, we are still uh, living dealing with COVID, and I'm not I'm I've always supported fireworks in this town, and I want to support this, but I cannot support this expansion. I I just think it's excessive, and we're we should still be conservative and mindful of the fact that we're still living in a pandemic. So if the county allows us to do the fireworks, I'd like to do it, but I'd like to do it on the uh, more modest uh, version of this, not, not this enhanced version. So uh, if I can ask for, uh, through the manager uh, where this came about to expand uh, the fireworks during COVID, I, I just find it really unreasonable. Okay. And, and, I'm, uh, and I'm a supporter of fireworks. Okay, Mr. Manager from the supporter of fireworks with a question, go ahead. Thank you, Nelly. I don't know if you wanna answer it. Uh, Nell, like go ahead, Nelly. Prior to um, Andy saying anything, um, Fourth of July is a very important date for our country. Um, it's the Day of Independence. This is when we commemorate all the people who lost their lives, support uh, um, fighting for our freedom. And last year we didn't do anything because we weren't allowed. Even if it was just to, like like Charles just mentioned, I mean we could just throw the fireworks and have people wash them from their homes. Um, they go very high in the sky, so I think most people can probably see them from the comfort of their home without having to come to the beach or anything like that. The reason why I, I, I propose that we would expand the amount of time is because last year we didn't spend a dime on this. And this is something that's very patriotic. It, it gives us that, that um, proudness of being an American and um, honoring the ones who fell for our country. So I felt that because we didn't spend a dime last year, we could spend a little bit more to honor those that sacrificed their life for our freedom. And that's really where, where that whole um, situation came about. Um, and you. spending an additional seven minutes for um, to, to, to have our uh, uh, feel a little bit of normal in our lives is really a small sacrifice to bring to our town um, in terms of being the only ones, I mean, like Charles said, if it, if it comes to a point that the Miami-Dade County Mayor says no, then, well, then it is that we just cancel it and that's the end of it. Um, but at least it's on the table and we'll be moving forward with something that, that represents who we are as a nation. And I think that's very important. And that's really the reasoning and it has nothing to do with the town manager. I was the one who brought this to the, to, to the request to bring this the table so we can all vote on something that that represents us as a nation. And that's okay, all. thank so you very Andy much. If anybody wants to add to that, then please. And, do so. and Mr. Manager. Thank you. Um, you know, we, we were asked to, to look at 
options to see if we could link if this if they could lengthen it for us and that's what they came up with they that was what they brought to us this also comes out of tourism dollars which we have quite a bit in there that has to be used for special events so this considering that that it's not general fund money so you're saying it's not it's not at the cost of our residents correct okay let's uh we've got one speaker please set the clock for a minute and bring in the speaker First speaker will be Joshua Epstein. Joshua, please do your name and address for the record and your comments. Joshua Epstein, 9317, Bay Drive. I want to start off by saying it, this is a gross disregard for human life. There's a virus that is still spreading. 550,000 people have died. And you can talk about this nation and what July 4th means, but this nation was founded on fiscal responsibility. It was founded on the value that we have to protect our citizens from any enemy foreign with and within. And there's a virus. The virus is within us and it's irresponsible. That is why no community around us has gone forward with fireworks. Only a moron would continue with fireworks in a year where we've had, where that we're in the middle of an economic shortfall when we're gonna call our town a town of sea turtles. Yeah, we're gonna expand our fireworks show, which is gonna be more pollution. And all you have guys have done, a lot of this has done spend more. You came in here and said, well, we're fiscally responsible. You cut off someone's contract who's making $20,000 a year. That woman no longer has an income because of you. And you wanna shoot that up into the air, polluting our environment, wasting money and going against anything that we all believe in. That is that is the livelihood of the Surfsiders. And I think you're a, everyone's a fraud. If you're gonna say we're the town of the town of the sea turtles, town of the residents, but then go ahead with this spend Thank more money. Thank you, Mr. Epstein. Next speaker, shortfall. please. Um, Nelly, hold hold that thought for the end for me, and uh, let's get the speakers, and then we'll go around one more time. Mr. Henderson. Hey, good evening. Horace Henderson, 9195 Collins Ave. I'm getting my second vaccine in, in 10 days at Publix. All people are currently allowed to schedule theirs. By July, I can't imagine anyone who wants it won't have it in Surfside. I don't see any reason why, if the government allows it, that we wouldn't do this. As a former Marine, I believe it is a very patriotic to have the fireworks to bring people together. And I believe we need this now more than ever, especially based on the comments of the previous resident. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Next speaker is Deborah Simadevilla. Debbie, please tell your name and address for the record and your comments. Deborah Simadevilla, um, 9108 Abbott Avenue. I commend uh, Commissioner Castle and, well, pretty much all of you that are there tonight. Um, you spoke beautifully. I love uh, what you stated. I don't wanna be repetitive. Absolutely, the town, our folks need something like this. And like you said, it is 100%, um, it's a win-win. It's a if you're allowed to do it, you do it. If you don't, you don't. But as Mr. Henderson said, Nelly, you know, we need, the patriotic uh, effort right now. And honestly, people go and gather in different places for way longer than seven minutes, okay? In crowded places, they walk around in contained areas, they sit next to each other on an airplane, you know, for longer than seven minutes, guys. And I think it would be very lousy of Surfside not to do that. Thanks, not to do beautiful. Uh, firework. So I commend you guys. Thanks. Uh, Thanks, Deb. Thanks, Thank Deb. Um, listen, well, before, let me go, let me get my word in and then we can go around again. Um, Charles, I agree with you. I thought that was, that's a brilliant sort of observation. Uh, you know, we absolutely need to move back towards normalcy. We absolutely do need to um, lead the way out just like we led the way in. We, we took quick steps uh, to address the, the crisis. And now as the crisis is easing, we're trying to get back to normal. And I think that if we can't do it as a group out there on the ocean, I think that we absolutely could do it um, and give the uh, residents the benefit of the fireworks and pay our patriotic duty um, to uh, our fallen heroes who founded this country. By the way, this country wasn't founded on fiscal responsibility. Um, it was founded for a lot of other reasons, but it wasn't fiscal responsibility. And anyway, I, uh, I support that position. So let's go around again. Uh, who had their hand up? I, Charles, the vice mayor and Nellie, go ahead. All right, Nellie, you're gonna go last, you're lucky. 
Yeah, thank you. And, um, you know, I could see a scenario where we would have to do some, some, uh, some town management uh, for crowd control. You know, let's say that, that, um, that the county does allow it. Um, we and, and we want to do it, but there are there are um, there are ways that we can limit who would go to the beach, um, as other towns have done, such as with an eat with a um, um, in, uh, an evite or event bright invitation, where you know each uh, household or, or each person is allowed one or two tickets first come first served, um, and and checkpoints. Um, people are used to waiting, you know, in line at a safe distance. Um, but there are creative ways that other towns have used. Last year, there were some towns that did their fireworks display and they allowed people into a park um, because they were, had a fixed number of tickets that, that was the maximum that would be allowed in that space and they aired on the side of caution. And I didn't hear any news reports that said that it didn't work out. I imagine there's a lot of risks, but uh, COVID safety is first and foremost on my mind with everything. Um, and, um, and the county has guided us well for the most part so far. And I think that the new administration is gonna to continue to do that. So this may be a moot point. Um, and I won't take any more time. I'll just, um, I'll just say, I'm glad that the residents support my point of view. Thank you, Charles. Vice Mayor and then Nellie. Now your mic's Hi, off, Tina. Tina. Your mic's off, Tina, you're up. Okay, uh, yeah, you called Nelly. So, um, okay, thank no, you. No, I said vice, vice mayor, and Nelly. Oh, got it. Okay, so I, I just want to state for the record that I am supportive of spending the thirteen thousand dollars for the fireworks if the county allows us to do that. I am not supportive of this enhancement. Um, this commission a year ago was we're making budget cuts, um, really without cause, and and I find this really kind of gross. I, I want to support this, but I can only support it to the amount that we've allocated previously, the $13,000. I support fireworks. Um, would you but vote I don't for it? Would you, would you vote for it if it was reduced tonight? Yes, I would. I would vote for the okay. original scope. All right. Interesting. Okay, can Nellie, go ahead. Something? Okay. What I find, we're talking about physically responsible and to... Um, help our residents in situations that they've been put into. So now let's talk about $150,000 that our new engineer companies are gonna cost us. Where we used to pay uh, CGA, or CGS, what is it called? Calvin Giordano. We used to pay them $83,000. Now we're gonna pay them 100, almost 100, and I think it's 130, 100. It comes out to about $50,000 more. So we're talking about, oh, let's save here, let's save there. And that's thanks to Eliana that wanted, couldn't trust Calvin Giordano. So right there, we're okay to spend an additional $50,000 that our residents are not going to see. But it's not okay to spend an additional $7,000 that our residents will enjoy and that will bring them back to a, a, a small sense of becoming nor being normal. And, uh, and, and, and to honor the people that have died for our country, for our freedom, I think that is gross. And that is disrespectful to the memory of our country. So I'm sorry, but if we're talking about saving money, we've spent money on different items, okay? And if we've, we've also saved tons of money on uh, things like, for example, Jacober, or even reducing, um, what's the one with the communication, Pin Pinzer Group, down to $36,000. And then we have, I heard that there's some kind of consulting thing coming out from the tourist board, where we're trying to save, which we're trying to spend money on a consultant. Okay, so we can't, so wait a minute. So we can't spend on our residents $7,000 additional or $20,000, but we can spend on an outside consultant. Hmm. Well, that's very nice, but I, do, I think that's gross. And that's where I stand on that one. Thank you very much. Okay, so we've had all the comments on the fireworks. No, no, I don't... no. May I respond, please? It'll take a minute. Um, is everybody okay with going around again? Do we want to go around again for one minute because we're getting stuck on this? Is that? Um, can, can you I do would it? propose as a seconder if Commissioner Velasquez is okay with spending the original amount. I would be okay with that. 
I think we should spend the, 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 ex the expanded amount because last year we didn't spend anything. There's tons of money in, the, in that fund that has not been used for events. We have not used the, the, the money for the uh, 96th okay. Street Park event. We have not here. used the money for the Easter Fest. We have not used the money for um, but Nelly, uh, but the Nelly, Fun Festival. Nelly, 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 let me offer you this. I think Tina has said she would vote for it. I'm not sure if Charles is now going to vote for the increased amount. Well, he's been um, voting for the increased amount from the beginning. Okay. Well, Charles, would you be comfortable voting for the increased amount? Um, I, I am, but I would prefer that we get the vice mayor's support on this for, for, for the original show that we usually, that we have, um, rather okay. than Tina, Tina, I mean, Nellie, I, I don't, but I, I, my, my thing is if we're, if we're basing it on we're saving and being physically responsible, but this money was out, it was already allocated every year, $13,000. And last year we did not use a penny of it. Then but why look, can't Nelly, we give those additional seven Nelly, minutes of happiness? Nelly, why is that can, such a can, big deal? Well, listen, the, the, this is the right, article. Can I, can I well, hold on. I'm trying. I'm trying to get this done, folks. You know, because again, this is the kind of thing that 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 sets us up to not get through our agenda. I mean, we are we are fooling around here with a very minor issue in my mind. I could go either way, Nelly. I think that saving money well, is I hope you support it, Charlie. Well, I, I think your your point is well taken. Your point about the other monies is well taken. I mean, this commission, you know, we cut a million dollars out of the budget when we came into office. We saved a million dollars. We obliterated all the consultants. We got rid of all that nasty stuff going on in the tourist board. And we've reset ourselves to move forward. Now, the vice mayor has an opinion. Um, I, you know, listen, I, I respect it. I, I, I would prefer to see the bigger fireworks display, but I think it sends a message if we're all on the same page, you know, being united, being together and trying to see each other's well, point I'm, of view. Well, I'm asking her support. I'm asking okay. her support for something that is very... Right. Well, go ahead needed. and ask her. Okay, Dina. Okay, well, you guys, can, to, can I respond to what was said before? This? Yes, yes, you can respond. Go ahead. Okay, because, uh, you know, I, the money's coming out of the events we didn't have, but, I, you know, I see better use for this money. I'd like to have events if we can do that. I, uh, I'd like to see the giveaways to residents. I'm not taking anything from the residents. I'm saying the fireworks show that we put out should be enough. We don't even know if we can do that. And I don't see why we would expand that, whether we can do it or not, because, you know, we, we can do better things for the residents. I have but let me tell you, Tina, Tina, you have well, an opportunity here. Hold on a second. Yeah, Nelly, felt, Nelly felt strongly enough to bring this to the table. She thought about it. She worked on it. And she feels very strongly about it. Now, you know, I mean, this, what we are, we're trying to be collegial here. We're trying to get things done. We're trying to do things for our residents. And we're bickering over a few thousand dollars. I don't see the, the payoff in that. So there'll be, a, well, there'll be an issue. There'll be an issue soon that you feel strongly about, that you will want her support on. And I'm just saying that, that, and I'm not telling you how to vote, but I'm just saying, listen, for my money, you know, I want to support Nellie because she works hard and she cares. And I also want to support you, but I'm saying this seems to be a small issue and she brought it to the table, just like you brought things to the table that you wanted support on. Anyway, I want you to think about that while I get... Uh, Commissioner well, Salazar. Could, could I finish? I wasn't finished speaking. Oh, sorry. You can finish. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. So, I mean, I mean, I have proposed to the town manager uh, that a good giveaway we could do are these, um, I found them online, they're uh, LED armbands that would be nice for the dog walkers and, you know, it could be a giveaway to all the residents. That would, okay, that would but be, you, you know, could, you a could, lot of you could, can do. I, we're, I, I support the fireworks. It, but okay, like I, it's not the year to go extravagant. We're all still right. Okay, it. listen, your point has been made, and you, you, okay. you, you, you've done a good job, and I appreciate that. Well, we don't, again, we don't have to dwell on that. I think we all know what Look, your I, I just want to, I just want to say that I do support the fireworks, but I don't, I, you've support said that four times now. So, okay, that's good. so all right, Eliana, go ahead. Uh, okay, so I'm um, sorry the, in, about my absence. I'm back. Uh, I agree with the vice mayor that we should not be spending additional funds in this uh, economic climate. I don't know the last time. I don't think anyone 
on this call would drop $7,000, okay? When was the last time you spent $7,000 on something? I think what happens with politicians is it starts to feel like pretend money, like it's not our money. When in, in our lives, do you know what would have to happen for me to part with $7,000 based on someone saying, hey, I think it'd be fun, okay? That's, that's not how we make decisions. The residents need us to be fiscally, fiscally is the word, fiscally responsible. And that means that we don't get to all get whatever time and getting along does not mean, I understand that what the mayor is saying is, come on, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. If you don't agree with me on this one, I'm not gonna agree with you on that one. And even intimating that that's something that would factor in is a terrible thing to do. We should not decide okay, to- Okay, Commissioner, thank you. you. You need to be more concise with your points. The, the bottom line is, is nobody's scratching anybody's back. You're done. Your your time is up. I, no, the no, bottom, no, your, I am, your time, again, do I have to mute you? You're st Stop. I'm still, why are you interrupting your, your, me? Your time is up. Your minute was up. We're going around I, at a minute of time. Commissioner. I appreciate, I appreciate the mayor's gesture just now, which I, I thought I see as kind of an olive branch. Um, I, um, I, I, as I said, I would support your Commissioner Velasquez, this original proposal. Um, I justified it in my own mind in terms of fiscally responsible because the, the vendor did not charge us the penalty last year. As I mentioned, um, the, mayor's, the mayor is right that this is just nickels and dimes, but they're contributed by every one of our hardworking residents. So I take that very seriously. Um, I also take seriously, you know, and I don't wanna be a hypocrite either, in that last year I said in our hearts and our minds as Surfsiders and as Floridians and as you know Americans, we don't need fireworks to be patriotic and to be grateful for our veterans and for who we all are, including our neighbors and the town. Um, and um, you know, I don't need that. At the same time, I think that the fireworks are are needed as a community, you know, um, after these rough times. Um, that said, I would make just one last um, last uh, call for you, Commissioner Velasquez, um, not even because of the money, but because of the turtles, because I don't want to be a hypocrite and the fireworks are terrible for the turtles. Oh boy, you gave and, another. Um, <laughs> it makes them all go the other way, but they can't lay their nests. So maybe, maybe a, shorter, um, a shorter firework display is good for that reason too. Okay. okay. You know what, Charles, you came out with an excuse that is definitely something that I can consider as important because the turtles are important. But to come out with an excuse about fis fiscal uh, behavior and when we have residents that are going through massive floods and we have not been able to come out with, an, with a solution for that problem because we fired our engineer firm and now we're paying an additional $50,000 that's not an excuse. But when you tell me that it's important because of the sea turtles and, and, and that hatching and all these beautiful things that happen with nature, then yes, I agree with you 100%. Okay, good. Let's, let's, let's end it there. Uh, Madam Clerk, uh, it sounds like uh, Nelly has acceded to the uh, lower version. Um, by the way, these are tourist dollars. These are not taxpayer dollars, okay? So it, it, it is less of, a, uh, of an impact because those are dollars that we have to spend on tourist related issues. And this certainly fits that bill precisely. Uh, please call the question, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Castle? Yes. Commissioner Velasquez? Yes. Commissioner, oh, Mayor, we had public speakers. No, no, we already had, we are, they already spoke on this issue. Commissioner Salazar? Uh, do we have public speakers or we don't? All right, Salzauer, again, you're you're being asked to vote, okay? Not not ob obstruct the meeting. Commissioner Salzauer? Trying to give our residents the opportunity to talk. All right, we that's have, it. Go they past. They already go, talked uh, on this again. item. Oh, okay. You know, it, it's infuriating. And, and again, call, ask her one more time, please. Commissioner Salzauer? No, I don't think we should have fireworks in a pandemic. Vice Mayor Paul. Um, I, I just want to ask too, are, are there new speakers? Is that? Or is, no, there are, are not new speakers, Vice Mayor. 
Oh, they're not. Oh, okay. Um, uh, what are we voting on? Are we voting on the original? We're voting on the, the lower, reduced the lower amount. version that, that you said you would vote for. Okay. Well, I, I thank you for that, uh, Commissioner Velasquez. Um, I, I know your heart is in the right place, but I'm more comfortable with what we normally do if the county allows us. So thank you, and I vote yes. Mayor Burkett? Yes. Mayor, the motion carries. All right. So now we're up to good and welfare. Um, Clerk just told me we're running a little bit late. So why don't we bring in the first speaker for three minutes? Give us a minute list to change the Okay. Question. First speaker will be Joshua Epstein. Please say your name and address for the record and your comment. Joshua Epstein, 9317, Bay Drive. I just want to address some of the other comments I was making before I was muted. I don't understand why we keep on saying that fireworks is what brings a community together. What brings a community together is honesty, integrity, being transparent with residents, and not using taxpayer dollars to lie to them like we saw again this month. I saw Robert Wisman posted on Nextdoor a great review of every single point that you made in your Nextdoor post where you seem to have claimed, you claim that everything done in this town was of your doing. And every single point, it would take me probably three hours to lay out every time that you lied. And resident taxpayer dollars are being used to blatantly lie to residents to mislead them. And you're trying to feed off of the uninformed to ride your way to the election. So I think that to make that, to clear up on that comment, I think that we should get rid of that section within our um, within our agenda. And I also think that to add on to what um, what leads to a community feeling, what leads to transparency with, um, among the residents is not cutting them off, not going out of your way to say, you know, I don't want residents to talk, not using any excuse possible to trans transition it to one minute. I actually timed myself before the meeting. It took me 15 seconds just to say my name and my address. 45 seconds is not enough time for a resident to speak. It has never been enough time. That is why even previous commissions, the prior commission, which everyone, all residents said, mostly pointless, I mean, without merit to it, that they limited comment. Well, they didn't. They had it at three minutes. Every commission has had it at three minutes. This has to do with, as I went to before, you believe that you can succeed if you're able to mute residents. If residents are not informed that these meetings are going on, if residents are not able to speak, and if they say, well, I'm only going to have 30 seconds to speak. Why stay up for four hours tonight when I only have 30 seconds to speak? I was in contact with a resident. She reached out to, um, to ethics, and ethics already responded to her. This is a clear, blatant ethics violation, and you can have enough it, another ethics penalty. You've already been, you've already gotten in trouble with ethics for campaign finance violations, but that seems to be something that you don't believe in. You don't believe that ethics exists. So I think that we have to return to that three minutes in terms of what, um, to, to address some, some of Commissioner Kessel's items where he said, well, the, the um, good and welfare portion is three minutes. Agenda items, discussion items are the ones that have consequences. Those are the ones that residents come to speak on. This false pretense that we're limiting comment because there were so many residents waiting to speak at the last meeting is clearly false. I was the only speaker on most items as, at the last meeting as I was at this meeting. There was no overcrowding. There was two to three speakers on the most important issues at the last meeting. That is nine minutes of resident comment. And this is a solution to a problem that does not exist. If it's if you don't want to be here, you can resign, go to bed, and you can go about your Tuesday nights. But to cut off resident comment because you merely don't want to hear from them is unacceptable. The greater problem is because of the commission. That is why agenda items go on forever. It is because rather than sticking to the time frame that to, to the three minutes, three minutes, three minutes, or one minute, one minute, one minute, it's three minutes. It goes back to the mayor. There is no, there is no actual process for what happens here. If the mayor interrupts every single person the second he disagrees with them, any anytime something happens at that that, that um. Charles Burkett doesn't agree with, he interrupts them. That is the problem. You're never able to get a finish a statement during the regular items, and commissioners just speak forever. Thank you, it's Mr. the Epstein. residents who put you into office. You ought, to, you ought to respect Thank their you. rights. Okay. Uh, Mr. Epstein had a couple inaccurate statements that I'd like to correct. There are no ethics violations that I've received from the ethics board. Uh, next speaker, please. Next speaker is Jeff Rose. Jeff, please state your name and address for the record and your comments. Good evening, everybody. Jeff Rose, 8851 Proud Avenue. Uh, I'll be a little bit all over the place right now. Thank you, Commissioner Kessel, for having your virtual open hours. It was a nice way to be able to speak with the commissioner one-on-one uh, -on -one and not have to bother them on their personal work time. Um, I've been going to the beach with my family every weekend now and noticed the new toppers. They look great. Thank you, Randy Hecker and the Public Works guides. Um, also, I've been walking the beach with my family and I've noticed a few things along the buildings on the ocean on Collins. One building I have noticed is the RK. The RK is a very nice building, but if you look at it compared to the traditional Surfside buildings, like the Four Winds, Surfside Towers, the Champlain Tower buildings, 
it stands out a lot because of its shape. The wedding cake idea may work on paper, but when you translate it to Surfside properties, it produces a very unique shape and out of character building for Surfside. Maybe we could increase the side setbacks an extra 5% to increase more light and air and natural airflow as well as more creativity and characteristics for architects so every building doesn't look exactly like the Arte and just design a building to meet code. The way the wedding cake works because of the setbacks, it mainly benefits the upper units and the penthouses. We should spread the light and air for all residents, not just the upper floors. As was stated at the earlier quasi-judicial meeting tonight, we only have a handful of properties in town one day that will be developed. And I personally would rather see more traditional buildings be being built in the town like the Manatee, Carlisle, Forwoods, and Champlains. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Rose. Next speaker, please. I'm. Next speaker is De Debbie Simadevilla. Debbie, please state your name and address for the record and your comments. Hi, Debbie Simadevilla, 9108 Abbott Avenue. Um, well, I actually really appreciate uh, the three minutes during Good and Welfare because sometimes you have various topics that you want to mention. But I have to tell you, I believe that the one minute during agenda items is more beneficial. I like the idea of the one minute. Why? Because it helps us stay on track, be concise, and God knows I like to talk. <laughs> but I appreciate when the mayor at the last meeting said, hey, Deb, let's stick to it. I appreciate it because I could definitely ramble and go off topic. So I like to have one minute and if possible, go a couple of times. And I think that way you have you get more done. You could actually maybe get some answers and have more of a conversation instead of three minutes during agenda items. And realistically, if we want to, what I really want is for us to advance with the agenda with the many, many important items that we have. And I think that we need to be concise, stick to the topics, and please, I know that as residents, we could generally be able to say what we want to say, but we do need to be respectful. You know, civility goes both ways. And believe me, at the last, with the last commissioners, there were many times that we never got even an answer back. So I really love the fact that you guys actually answer us. I appreciate that so much about this commission. Most of the times when someone speaks on an item, we actually get a response from you guys. Okay, and that is so important because many times I would go with my little time speech to the last commission and guess what? I would say things that were truly important. I would wait an entire month and I never got an answer. And I was a very educated speaker about the topics at hand. So that is my suggestion. I love the one minute. Maybe we could go a couple of times. Um, I appreciate when you guys help me keep, stay on topic and to be concise and not repetitive. And I just would love if uh, residents would be a little bit kinder with each other and not so rude. Um, because when you're rude to the commissioner or to the mayor, anybody on staff, guess what? You're rude to the whole community. You're rude to all the residents that actually want to get things done. So I respect um, pr previous speaker, but please treat others the way you want to be treated. That's all I'm going to say. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Next speaker, please, Madam Clerk. Next speaker will be Nicole Travis Loper. Nicole, please state your name and address for the record and your comments. Hi, everyone. Nicole Travis, um, 8843 Carlisle. Um, good evening. I, um, I'm calling on two issues that I think uh, are, are things that are day to day concerns and interests of, of the residents. So, first, um, Savino Miller presented last night in a public meeting to the Parks and Rec Committee um, on the 96th Street Park redesign. And they presented you know, three different options to us. And uh, the design is looking great and I'm really excited about it. But um, I was disappointed not to see an option that included a kayak or paddleboard launch um, when residents have made it clear that there is you know, just great interest in having one somewhere in town. And I understand that 96th might not end up being you know, the best spot in the end for uh, for a launch, but you know, right now we have a really rare opportunity to, you know, envision a brand new park, and I think it would be irresponsible not to at least explore the option. Um, so I hope the town leadership, you know, asks our design firm to add an option and help us explore that option and um, 
and just really get a chance to see what it looks like and all the related implications of having a launch at that park. Um, and the second item is uh, related to yet another incident at 88th and Harding. Um, today, this afternoon, a cyclist was hit by a car. And you know, this is a time when dozens of kids and families are at the tennis center. They use that intersection to get in and out of the residential area and to the tennis center. Um, it's really disturbing to see. And I just wanna you know, continue to reiterate how you know, this is something we really have to focus on as a town, um, you know, just to protect our, our residents and our, and our, and our guests. Um, Miami Beach has a slow streets initiative right now. And I know Vice Mayor Paul and, and I think Commissioner Kessel maybe have mentioned it. Um, it has been hugely successful. It's hugely popular. And I think it is something that has, you know, a, a place in our town. And um, I think initiatives like this really need to be explored uh, in more fully. So uh, those are my two, those are my two items. Um, uh, Sandra, my husband also would like to make a comment. I don't know if he can use the rest of the time to, to jump in or is that, is that okay? That, he can't, no, no, he can actually have three minutes. So he may, he may come on, go ahead. Thank you. And I won't take three minutes. Um, uh, first of all, wanted to say, I, I, I called in last, oh, my name is Tim Loper, 8843 Carlisle Avenue. Um, I, I called in last month about the tennis center and non-residents being able to, to, to book time um, and some of the courts having some difficulty getting uh, reservations. I just wanted to say thank you. To, the, the problem has been addressed. Uh, I have seen changes at the tennis center and I wanted to say thank you to whomever it was that's responsible for that. That was great to see uh, local government taking care of local issues. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was the kayak launch. Um, you know, had two months ago been a, a request, I believe, to the town attorney to figure out what the cost of having to pay back this, the money we received to do the seawall so that we could maybe put a kayak, kayak launch on the seawall. And I don't know if there's been any ability to figure out what that number is, but it does dovetail with the presentation of the from the design firm of you know, is it even possible? Because if it's going to cost $4 million to pay that money back, you know, it's off the table. So if there's an answer to that question, that would be great. And that's all I have. Thank you. Sir, Sir, what was your first name? Tim, T-I-M. Tim. Okay, Tim, thank you. The clerk asked. Can I okay, answer Nelly, that? Well, well, let, let's answer it at the end. We're going to go. Well, we have? Because he, the, the resident might be gone by the time that that I, I would Nelly, rather that's, answer this one in particular right now, if it's okay with everyone here. Okay. I mean, that's not what we agreed to, but if, if nobody has an objection, go ahead. Okay. Um, uh, Tim, thank you for your comment. Um, yes, it is $494,000 that we received in funding to do all the seawalls in town, not just the one at 96th Street Park. Um, so that, that was the number, correct, Lily? Uh, if, if I'm not wrong, would that we discuss that? Yes, Commissioner, that was for one of the phases that involves the 96th Street wall. Okay, so if we were to have to pay this back, it would be probably that or a little bit less, correct? Or am I not correct? We made Can initial contact with the, with the state. I believe it would be that amount, uh, potentially less if it could be negotiated with them. And what it would do is it re released the restrictions that the seawall and the area needs to be used by the general public. Okay, thank you. Okay, I think let's, that let's, answered the resident. Let, could, I, let's, could I just add the seawall was in two phases, so it, it, that wasn't the full amount. That was but, one of the but, phases. But, but Vice Mayor, could you please raise your hand when you want to talk? Yes, I did. We're, uh, you know, okay. but I didn't recognize you. So um, let's continue on with the. Uh, with the uh, speakers first, okay, and we'll finish with the commissioners. Next speaker will be Horace Henderson. Horace, please state your name and address for the record and your comments. Good evening, Horace Henderson, 9195 Collins Ave. Um, I agree with the previous caller. Um, we still have an issue with traffic. Um, in the last few days, I've seen many cars racing along Collins, um, one of them actually going from the far left lane to the far right lane and back into the far left lane in a matter of about um, you know, 35 feet. Um, clearly he was zooming around a, a car that was going slower than he wanted to um, and quite clearly uh, going double the speed limit. Um, people running through a red light at least 50 miles per hour and on and on. So 
Um, it, you know, I, I, I've seen some good efforts, but really we need to, uh, you know, continue to ask to focus on that because um, it's going to be a problem. Somebody's going to die. Um, on the flip, on the flip side, um, I would like to uh, go the other way and, and thank Commissioner Kessel for his comments on time and democracy. Um, Commissioner Salazar clearly stated that the mandate is up to three minutes, so I don't understand the vitriol of you know the, the fact that it's being less than three minutes. Um, it sounds sounds like it's your choice. Um, I never get even close to three minutes in my discussion, um, and so I, again, I don't don't understand. I want to thank the mayor, the vice mayor, Paul, Commissioner Velasquez, and Commissioner Kessel, the town manager, and all the employees for all that they do for the town. Um, it, at least for me, it's greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Ms., uh, next speaker, please. Next speaker will be Jeffrey Platt. Um, he emailed us earlier that he needed to speak. Okay. Jeffrey Platt, 9225 Collins Avenue. Do you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Um, actually, I just have two things. Um, I'm really quite upset about all the bullying that happens at the town meetings. And I think part of that is because we're on Zoom. Um, so I would urge the town to get back to in-person commission meetings as quickly as possible. Uh, I think that would alleviate some of the muting and stuff like that that goes on in the meetings uh, without casting any blame. Um, the second thing is quite unrelated. Um, I go on Facebook and I see a person on the Facebook who looks very much like Commissioner Va Velasquez, but her name is Nelly Nogarolas and pardon my mispronunciation. And I'm curious as to <laughs> what Commissioner Velasquez's real name is, if that makes sense, because she's Nelly Velasquez in the town, but she's Nelly Nogarolas on Facebook. So my question to the commissioner is, what is your legal name? And well, thanks very one much. is the maiden and the other let, is the married. Let, 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 let him talk. <laughs> let, let him finish. <laughs> Well, there's only there's only one Anything. legal name that you have. There's only one legal. You may have okay. a maiden name. You may have a married name. But there's only one legal name, and I'd like to know what that is. Well, the name that's here on my uh, my screen, Nelly Velasquez. Okay, fine. Thanks very much. Next speaker, please. Next speaker is George Kusilas. George, please state your name and address for the record and your comments. George Kuslis, 9225 Collins Avenue. A um, couple things. The, the main thing I want to talk about was the, um, the uh, change to parking on Harding or some way to increase the sidewalks. And I think there was a meeting uh, a couple weeks ago I didn't attend, maybe a budget meeting or something. And it was brought up that um, maybe the, the whole initiative was moving faster than it should. And, and the real story there is I, I created a sketch because there was no sketch. And at a, at a DVAC meeting uh, back in December, I believe, uh, the, the committee there was wondering what would a uh, expanded sidewalk solution look like? And they had to wait till March till their next meeting. And there was the idea that maybe they would have some visual way of looking at it. Uh, and so I, in the end, kind of a day before, I provided a graphic, which I think encapsulates some of the major issues that you would have to deal with if you want to do it. It's, it's meant to be the start of the conversation, and, and some of the key issues are safety and drainage. Uh, and then the graphic also tended to show, um, tried to represent really how much space there was available. You know, you, you weren't going to get a lot, but you were going to get something significant by doing it. So anyway, it's an effort to, to start a conversation, not to end it or to short circuit it. And, and I hope it was um, accepted by most in, in that vein, because, um, you know, it's an important issue. Um, it's not the only answer, but I, I hope it opens the conversation, because the only way stuff moves forward 
for, for many people is when they can actually see something and say, I like that, I don't like that, I, I, I want this different or something. You, you need to have something to jumpstart the conversation. Um, the other thing, I guess earlier, um, there was a comment on the wedding cake buildings and that, that's always been something that's intrigued me. And the wedding cake is something that basically came out of um, turn of the century Manhattan in about 1915, 1920. It was a reaction to some very tall vertical buildings in the Wall Street area. It's an idea that's interesting, but it's always been out of place in Surfside. And so, yeah, I welcome any any opportunity uh, to, to look at a better uh, way of dealing with issues of setbacks and, and uh, condo towers on the uh, oceanfront. Thank you. Thank you, George. Uh, that'll be the end of good and welfare. Let's go back to uh, the resolutions Sandra, would you take us through number C, please? Yes, Mayor. I'll Mr. Mayor, could I comment on some of the good and welfare? Because oh, I'm, I beg your pardon. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's let's do that. Yeah, everybody should have it. Go ahead. You go first. Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, yeah, I've waited patiently. <laughs> uh, so I, I appreciate all of the comments uh, from uh, from the residents. And um, again, the good and welfare time, you know, overall shows us that civility is the default. Um, you know, we heard from 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 everybody there, and um, even though they may have some pet issues or some issues that could be could be even considered like not in my backyard types of issues, you know, everyone describes their issues with um, you know in a gentle way that um, that's very realistic. And I would like to personally thank Deborah and um, I think it was Nicole and Tim who um, who who said you know thank you guys for being responsive. For actually listening and getting results, um, you know, and sometimes um, we ask questions. I'll speak for myself. I ask questions, and we never get the answer either. Like we still don't know how exactly those signs popped up around Point Lake, um, uh, really, really warning people not to kayak or launch kayaks or mm -hmm. be near a kayak around there or whatever. So, um, but we still keep asking. Um, I will say that you know seawalls. Seawalls to me are an issue that we, we need to get them fixed and repaired because that's a weak point when we have a storm surge. And uh, as, as everybody saw over, um, you know, over on the Bay Coast of Florida, that, uh, not the Bay, but um, um, on, the, on the West Coast of Florida, when they had hurricanes, the, the weakened seawalls were a way that the entire neighborhood got flooded and they couldn't get rid of the water. So our seawalls need to be in good condition so that um, so that we can actually control the, the water that might come from a storm and uh, and not have it constantly seeping in because of erosion because of poor seawalls. I don't think that we that we really need to look at keeping our seawalls maintained in order to release the responsibility of the public of, of the public being allowed to use our resources. We have a public beach that's been the tradition of Surfside is not to be locked down. Um, I don't think that we should restrict access to 96th Street Park um, in, in that way that's, that's based on fear um, and control. Um, the kayak launch, I think, does belong there. And I'm surprised to hear that the three proposals didn't have that included at all. The kayak launch survey came back with the results that that was the most popular place for people to consider having a kayak launch. And, uh, and I also heard the, the excellent planners that we hired to do the 96th Street design, um, that they wanted to integrate what was unique about that parcel of land in that park, and that's the water access, which I agree with. So I hope that's not a closed closed conversation. Um, I think that we can do it safely. I don't think that that uh, that water and kayaking and um, and children do not ever mix. I think that you have to just have a safe design that allows all of that. After all, we are a beachfront community, a public beachfront community, I might add. Um, the wedding cake design, mea culpa. I do not think the wedding cake design buildings are, um, are a big distraction to our, to our Collins Avenue corridor, nor our beach. I think they, they provide character and they do what Jeff Rose mentioned, allow a little bit more light and air in, and along those lines, that's why I have a memo, a memo and discussion item this month that's new. The last one, maybe it'll get moved up at some point, but it's about daylight plane and that same concept allowing daylight, sunshine, and air 
more into the neighborhood for greater continuity. Thank you, Charles. Perfect timing. Uh, Vice Mayor, go ahead. Okay, yes, I'd like to thank all the speakers for uh, their input and participating. And uh, what I, I'm also really uh, kind of surprised about, you know, we, I wasn't at that meeting. I guess I didn't, uh, I wasn't notified or, you know, didn't remember it, but uh, I, so I haven't seen the park designs. I am surprised also to hear that it didn't include a kayak launch because uh, that was uh, from the survey that was the number one spot. And I think it, it's the opportunity that we could put that there. So I'd like to see, uh, you know, it incorporated into the designs. I think that's important. I think that enough residents had asked for that. Uh, I do look forward to seeing what the designs are. As far as another um, kayak launch on a street end, um, you know, the re and, and to get back to what Commissioner Kessel just said about uh, the seawalls, the seawalls were in disrepair and needed to be redone, and they were. And if people launch kayaks without uh, proper docking, it, it can damage the seawalls. And it's, you know, it's a safety issue. And, and we should really see where we could put, a, a, if, we, if that's the desire of this town, we should see where we could put an additional kayak launch, but it really should be done in, in the right way with all the right permits and everything so that it's safe for anyone who's gonna use it. Uh, so that's uh, my thoughts there. I did not know about a cyclist being hit today. Um, really sorry to hear that and, and I hope they're doing okay. And uh, we, do, we do need to keep our streets safer. Uh, I, th I think, uh, you know, if, if we can get the painted bike lanes, that might help. Because right now, I think on Harding, there isn't a, a bike lane. So, so that's an issue right there. Uh, the issue really is, has to do with careless drivers and the speeders because I hear them too late at night, um, you know, passing by on Collins. Um, regarding the in-person meetings, yes, I'm ready. Let's do it. Uh, let's, let's get back to, to business in, in the people's house. <laughs> and um, also regard, you know, the wedding cake that can be discussed at the zoning workshop, you know, how to, how to get around that, how to compensate, um, you know, what, what that does. So yeah, um, all good points. So uh, thank you to everyone. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Anybody else? Uh, Mr. Manager, and then we'll go to Commissioner Salzhauer. Uh, quickly and briefly, uh, would the commission like for us to us, have uh, a, I'm sorry, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, would you like for the me to uh, ask Savan and Miller to include a kayak launch design in the 96th Street Park. Yes. No, we were yes. up and down. We were directed okay. not in our scope not to do that. So we want to make sure. Wait, 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 hang on a second. I want to talk about that specifically. You were directed. It was. It was. We're in the middle of. The, there. Okay. There you go. Interrupting again. There you go. Interrupting. We're including your hand up. Okay. Do you want me to mute you? We're you including can't interrupt. We're both there. Okay. You can, okay. You know, Commissioner. Yeah, you, know, you can't interrupt. You can't put your hand up and then start talking. That's not the way we do it here. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Manager. Yeah, it was not included in, in the in the scope of work when we gave it to Zavon and Miller. Thanks, Lino and Miller. I'm sorry. Not okay. Well, I, I so we I can think have them do that. It'll be a little more cost. We can have them do that. I think you're going to get a direction here shortly. Okay. Um, who would like to go next? Go ahead, Eliana. You have three minutes. Okay, this is good in welfare. So I would like us to just stay in good and welfare for now, okay? Um, first of all, I wanna say that under the Miami-Dade ethics, residents have a right to be heard in a reasonable fashion. And after you say your name and address, you have 45 seconds. Three minutes has been what it has been for a decade at the meetings. We have barely five people even calling into these meetings, as you can see. The issues and the agenda items are the meat and potatoes of town business. That's where the residents have the right and deserve to be heard. That is where they're entitled to their three minutes. People don't use it. Some people do use it, but they're entitled to it. I am so, I guess, heartbroken and dis disgusted, I guess, by how quickly the tide has turned now that the shoe's on the other foot. When we were in the audience and when we wanted to be heard, the commission for all their horrible, whatever they were doing with the P3, even though we were opposed to it, and even though we weren't all respectful, they heard us and they gave us three minutes. And the mayor was was respectful and he may he let us talk. And 
I will, I would sooner, I, I don't know, I, I don't even know how we can stand to look at ourselves in the mirror if we are not going to allow our residents the same courtesy that we were given when we were sitting there saying how terrible things were. And now that we are in charge, we owe it to our residents to continue that tradition and give them their three little minutes, okay, of time on each item. It's not a big deal. I also think that the good and welfare portion is specifically for items that are not on the agenda. So if they, someone wants to talk about a specific item on the agenda, they have three minutes for that item. Good and welfare is for items not on the agenda. We also know that we can't be voting on things in the middle of good and welfare. We can't walk items onto the agenda just because somebody brings it up. The, the public needs to be noticed and they need to be present. So I think any discussions about voting on putting anything in anywhere needs to be publicly noticed so that people can come and voice their opinions and be present for that. I think that paying back the money for the seawalls is a great idea because that opens up the whole town for anyone to launch a kayak and we can find a location to put a real kayak launch in. But we don't need to limit ourselves. And furthermore, I think that the way that good and welfare is right now where people just get to talk and nobody gets to respond to them is also terrible. I think if someone legitimately has a question, we should take the time to answer it and then move on to the next speaker, not try to mush them all together at the end. I wanna thank everyone for, for contributing here. I think that it's really, really important that we, like I said, offer the residents the same courtesy that was offered to us, even by the prior administration that you love to say was so terrible, which is looking better and better every day, quite frankly when we're trying to 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 do this job okay so i i would urge everyone to be that respectful to residents even if it's a, a minor or a teenager whoever it is they each deserve to be heard thank you thank commissioner you. nelly go ahead uh yes i want to thank all the residents that participated in uh good and welfare and throughout this meeting um i would like to hear examples or actually testimony of residents that have been cut off. Because to be honest with you, the only person that has been cut off and because he gets off the track of the, the actual subject that we're on is Mr. Joshua Epstein, a 14 year old Eliana's son. Other than that, I cannot see that any other resident in this town has ever been cut off, ever oh during any time that this that any resident would come on here and actually I have been a major advocate to have residents speak if they need more time. So to say that residents are being cut off is a very, very general term when we're only talking about one child. That's a very, 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 very harmful statement that you need to stop saying. Now, in okay. terms of, yeah. wait, I respected you when you were talking and I deserve my same respect, okay? So kindly allow me to speak. Um, in terms of the kayak launch, we are the commission and we can make a motion whenever we want if we want to direct the town manager to include the kayak launch. There is, and correct me if I'm wrong, Lily, that we can't make a motion right now to direct the town manager to include the kayak launch at the 96th Street Park because it's illegal. So please enlighten me and stop my clock while, while Lily answers my question. Um, Commissioner, under our rules with a majority vote, you can add an item to this agenda and you can discuss it tonight and take, and take action. Thank you very much. Okay, and then going forward with um, the kayak launch, I would like for us to make a motion uh, or myself make a motion that we direct our town manager to include that in the um, in the design of the 96th Street Park. As All right. Is, is there a the second to that motion? Anybody? There's a second to add it as a discussion item. I think that's what the town okay. man, town attorney just just instructed. Thank you. On. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Vice Mayor. Yes, may I make a suggestion? I don't know that we need to do a motion. Can we just ask the manager to okay, whichever do that? is fine? Well, listen, we we can do that, and I think we're. I was planning on doing that at the end, but she made a motion, so we have a second, and now we're in discussion on that motion. So, is there anyone else that but would I'm like not to comment? With my three minutes of comments. Oh well, yeah, you got you got a minute and fifteen seconds left. Okay, so. There's a motion in a second. Anybody want to make a comment on the motion? 
It's to direct the manager to include a kayak in the proposal. No, we, okay. we added to, I added okay. now, again, to again, you. commissioner, you have it your was hand up and then you start talking. Okay. You have to be recognized oh. and you still Mr. keep talking Russell, and you still keep talking and you still keep Mr. talking and I'm you still keep this. talking. Stop I'm not talking. Listening to commissioner. Okay. You're not, you're not running the meeting commissioner. You're not running the meeting, so that's it. Um, so we have a motion and a second, and I ask for comments, and Salzhauer continues to talk even after she's asked to stop and raise her hand. Okay, you want to try it again? Okay, what do you have to say about the motion? Commissioner Kessel said he wants to edit it as a discussion item. Okay, that's your not comment. Not as a Thank motion. You. Thank you. Thank you. He seconded it. Okay, okay. Call the question, yeah. Madam Clerk. Okay, that was your comment. Call the question on that motion, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Salazar? What, can you clarify what the motion is? The motion is to direct the manager to include the kayak launch into the park proposal at 96th Street. Yes or no? That is not what the motion was. Okay. Yes, but it was a discussion item. All right, all right, all right. No, it wasn't. You're, you're, you're out of order, Ms. Salzauer. You're out of order as usual. Okay, the, the question was, how do you vote on that, yes or no? Can Commissioner Kessel clarify what he said? Okay, that's it. Go past her. Please call the next person. Commissioner Kessel? Yes. Commissioner Velasquez? Yes. Commissioner Salzauer? No, it's inappropriate. Thank you. Thank you. No comment. No comment. Just a vote, Commissioner Salzauer. Bye, Go sir. ahead. Uh, I, I do have a question. Do we know why it was left out? Because I thought uh, I, I was at that but, meeting but, and I thought it was supposed to be in. Tina. Tina. Yeah. Yeah, I'll vote yes, but I just wanted to okay, wonder if thank you. I'll, 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 I'll entertain out. your question after the vote, though. Okay. Let's, okay. let's stay in order. Go Rick ahead. Sandra, yes. Okay, yeah. now you have a hunt, you have a minute and 15 seconds left. Nelly, finish your yes. comments. Thank you very much. Um, I also want to um, discuss the speeding problem. We need to resolve this issue. And the way to resolve this issue is to police parting and callings excessively. I don't see enough police out there all the time. There's speeders out there all the time. I think we need to have a set of, of police officers on Harding and on Collings that will be constantly giving out tickets. And even on in the in the in the um, business district to have the tickets given out to people that are double parking. They cause a, a, a traffic problem. How come in Ball Harbor people come down that bridge and they're scared? The minute they go down. That those breaks go on and they don't go beyond 30 miles an hour. Why? Because Ball Harbor means business. We need to mean business. There's already two children that have been killed by a car accident. The child in Ball Harbor and the child in Sunny Isles. What does it have to take for us to take this problem seriously and do something here in our town? We need to take this seriously and it needs to be done now. We need Thank to have you. our police officers out there all the time. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Manager, um, I think that uh, uh, I, I had talked to you about uh, potentially ask, you know, asked you if it would be okay if we had add overtime for our traffic detail. And I think you were going to talk to the chief and, uh, and see if that was uh, possible and, uh, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that we can implement that as soon as possible because I agree. Um, you know, you've been out there. I've been out there on radar details, and I appreciate you coming out, standing with me. Uh, I've stood with cops out there, and I've actually walked out into the middle of the street to try to stop someone who's going over 65. They literally went around me and the police officer telling them to stop and kept going. That's how bad it is, and we need absolute you know, focus on that. And I know it's a funding issue, but I don't think that, uh, and by the way, that's a tourist issue too. If the tourists, if the cars are going hundred miles an hour in Collins and Harding and the tourist gets killed, um, 
that that is not uh, what we want to have on the front page of the newspaper. So, you know, I think that spending the money, whatever money we need to spend, is absolutely uh, necessary, and we need to do it as soon as possible. Okay. Um, okay. So, Nellie, were you done with your comments? Oh yes. yes. Okay. And now, uh, uh, Ms. Salzauer, have you had all your comments yet? Have you had your three minutes? I don't recall. I was the last one that spoke, so what? Okay. I don't recall either, Mr. Mayor. Okay, well, let well, her go for three. Give her, give her three minutes, uh, uh, Jose, and let her let her say what she needs to say. Is this still the good and welfare part? You're responding to good and welfare comments right now. Okay. So what I'm what is upsetting is the way that they just you just we went through a whole meeting when we decided to approve the design of the park. And we said we wanted the kayak design separate because we don't own the seawalls yet. Okay, is my audio okay? Yes. Okay, we don't own the seawalls yet. The number one response on that kayak survey was that we want it to be just for Surfside residents. If you put the kayak launch into the design, we have no flexibility and it becomes a public access park. So everyone with a kayak from here to who knows where is going to drive down Bay Drive, park in front of the residents that live there and schlep their kayak out. Do you remember we spent like an hour discussing this item? This was residents were lined up to talk about it, which is why we made that decision. Now nobody's at this meeting. There's three people listening and you guys go, hey, why didn't we have the kayak launch in the park? Let's tell the manager to do it. That's why. The kayak launch on the survey, the number one thing people said was resident only. So we cannot keep putting the cart before the horse. We need to first buy back our seawalls and then say, yes, we own our seawalls. We can have a private resident kayak launch. And then we can then say, yeah, you know what? Let's see if we can put a kayak launch in there. But to do that ahead of time, okay, ahead of time, we don't want to do that. They can design, they can give us a separate, remember, it needs to be separate anyway, because otherwise it poses a danger. And I have to disagree with Commissioner Kessel on that because as a mother with young children, it, it is dangerous. It is a tiny park and water access is definitely a no. There are families in town there that have between three and six children. They cannot keep the kids out of the water if there is not, if there is access. The kayak launch needs to be a separate area. If you wanna put it in the same space, then you can do that with a wall so it's completely separate and that needs to be communicated clearly but we've had entire separate meetings to deal with the kayak launch so the way that things get decided these are the kinds of things that i used to drive used to drive me crazy about the prior commission at one in the morning they would vote on something with nobody there okay well we're doing the same thing we're on zoom no one's even watching and we're completely making policy you think the people who live across the street from the park wouldn't be here on this call if they knew that we were talking about putting a kayak launch across the street from them, a public kayak launch for everyone in, in all of Miami and who knows where else to come in and park. I mean, they would be outraged. We cannot do this to our residents. They elected us with a letter with a we have to we have to earn their trust and they need to know that we're not going to be making changes to the decisions that we've made in the middle of the night on a Tuesday when they're not paying attention. And I think we should have meetings in person from now on. We should, if you're ready to have fireworks together, we should have meetings together. No more hiding it in the house behind a Zoom camera Thank you, and a, and a meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, I want to thank Nicole Travis Loper for coming on. I completely agree with her. I am, uh, I was kind of going back and forth with Tim. I am, I am pretty surprised that, uh, that the kayak launch is not in the, uh, one of the designs. Um, I saw the results, um, and the results were widely in favor of putting the kayak in the park. Um, I think that needs to be corrected immediately. Um, number two, um, good and welfare is three minutes. There was, you know, the, the prior speaker has been making lots, lots of accusations that uh, good and welfare is not three minutes. Good and welfare has always been three minutes, and as a matter of fact, in a few minutes, we're gonna go through the town code, which basically outlines what the rules had been and what the rules um, I'm proposing um, to this commission be. So, and the last thing is what we, what I did as a result of 
of trying to keep the meetings moving forward. I mean, we've been stuck. I mean, every single one of our elected officials has complained that we're not making progress at meetings, okay? And one of the reasons that we're not making progress at meetings is because if everybody gets to speak for three minutes on every single item, we're talking about hours and hours and hours of speakers, which is good, but we've got to balance that. And what I did to balance that was I said, okay, well, everybody will get to speak for one minute, okay? And then if we need to go around again, we can go around again. And if we need to go around after that again, we can go around again after that. So that's, listen, if the commission doesn't want to do that, somebody can make a motion that we don't do that anymore and we let everybody talk for three minutes on every subject. But I don't know that that's consistent with our other promise to end the meetings at 11 o'clock. And as the prior speaker said, put your hand down, uh, Eliana, you're not getting chosen right now, I'm speaking. So, you know, the, the bottom line is, is that we need to have our meetings done at a reasonable hour, okay? That is not an option to go to one, two, two thirty, and have things stretch out like that. So we've got to find a balance. Uh, you know, the, the South Hour said there are three people listening to this meeting. Well, there are actually sort of almost 45 people listening. 23 are residents. Okay. It's a regular meeting. It's not a Tuesday night get together with the commissioners. It's a, an announced meeting where the commission is going to talk about issues that everybody has the option to speak on. So um, lastly, we need to get that radar detail going. Everybody's right. The speeds on Collins have to come down. Surfside has to be known like Bell Harbor and Golden Beach are known. And that is you don't drive fast through Surfside or you're getting a ticket. Okay. So everybody's had a chance to talk. Um, do we want to go around again or do we want to move on? Okay. Okay. Is there a motion to go around again? If I don't have a motion to go around again, then we're moving on. Okay. We're moving on. Okay. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please read uh, the next resolution? Yes, Mayor. The next resolution is actually three resolutions. So um, is it okay with the commission to read them all three? And well, it, if someone objects to that, uh, let, let them object now. Otherwise, you can go ahead and read them. A resolution of the Town Commission of the Town of Surfside, Florida, approving a project agreement with Keaton Associates, Inc. for stormwater engineering retainer services pursuant to the continuing service agreement for professional engineering services, providing for authorization and implementation, authorizing the expenditure of funds and providing for an effective date. The second resolution is a resolution of the Town Commission of the Town of Surfside, Florida, approving a project agreement with Nova Consulting, Inc. for utilities engineering retainer services pursuant to the continuing services agreement for professional engineering services, providing for authorization and implementation, authorizing the expenditure of funds and providing for an effective date. Third resolution is a resolution of the Town Commission of the Town of Surfside, Florida, approving a project agreement with Kimberly Horn and Associates, Inc. for geographic information system, GIS retainer services pursuant to the continuing services agreement for professional engineering services, providing for authorization and implementation, authorizing the expenditure of funds and providing for an effective date, item 5. Thank you very much. Is there a motion to move that forward? Nellie, is there a yes. second? Yeah, no Charles. second. Thank you. Any discussion on that item? Vice Mayor, you had your hand up first, very fast. Okay, so uh, thank you, Mayor. And so, yeah, I just as uh, during the fireworks discussion, Commissioner Velasquez pointed out, um, the increase for these services is $43,701.84, uh, plus $8,860 for uh, a, a transition of the GIS material. Um, I have a few questions. Uh, one is, what is the eight-month transition cost? Because is that included in here? Is that separate? Uh, because for... Um, I believe it's this first one, this first contract, the Keith Engineering is um, because it's the GIS system. And wow, something loud out there. <laughs> it includes uh, the one time payment of $8,860 transition and an, and an eight month transition time. So is the eight month transition time included in, in this cost or is it extra? And what if it is extra, what is it? That's my first question. 
Okay, Jason. No, thank you, uh, Mayor, freeze, Vice Mayor. Freeze, freeze the time for the Vice Mayor. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Commissioners. Uh, to answer that question, the, the eight-month transition period that was put in there by Public Works uh, is not included in that cost. What they're talking about there is that our uh, current engineer, uh, which we're transitioning out of uh, CGA, um, is still uh, undertaking a few tasks. So they, we're in the middle, I believe, of year two or three of the five-year MS4 uh, stormwater permitting process that they've already began. So they'll finish that out. CGA was taken off retainer the, this fiscal year. So any work that they do will be on a time and materials basis directly. And uh, they'll work with these new engineers as they transition that over. It's not expected to be a, a significant cost. It's not a it's not a double dip with two retainers. Do we know what the cost is? Because it, it's obviously it's not in here. Uh, and the other question too is um, regarding this contract is on uh, page 168 and 169. It mentions the 2000 you know 2020 year uh, year three, um, and I'm wondering why that's included if CGA already did that work. Mm -hmm. I don't have an estimate of what uh, the CGA costs are because they will be just on a time and material basis. I expect them to be less than $10,000 uh, to close out any services. So anything we can transition over to the new engineers, we will do immediately. Uh, but anything they've started uh, and they'll also, uh, you know, keeping them on, you know, they've been our town engineers, I think for about 15 years. So there's a lot of institutional knowledge there. So there'll probably be some discussions where we we'll pulled into various meetings with these three different uh, consulting firms is that we transition over. Uh, now you mentioned on, I'm sorry, page 168, was it? Right, well, it mentions the 2020 year three. Um, I, I'm just wondering why that's part of this scope. It, it, um, wasn't that year completed already by CGA? Yes, I think I think they're ju it's just for reference because it's a five year cycle and the CGA was handling those first uh, three years and that they will be transitioning out there. But yeah, I think that's just for a reference where it's just talking about the overall concept of the MS4 MPDS permit. So do we have an idea of the uh, eight month transition cost? Any kind of idea, like what have we been paying every month since they went off contract? Yeah, I can tell you uh, that related to this specific task of stormwater with the MS4 permit, I believe um, since October 1st, it's gonna be around four or $5,000. It hasn't reached $10,000. Um, so it's it's been pretty pretty minimal. Um, so are we going to be paying this, to, like paying each company that amount for eight months? The stormwater uh, retainer, I believe, is $2,000 a month uh, for them to do it. And they'll be working with, so CGA will be involved. There will be some additional costs for a few months. I think eight months is, is quite a, on, the, on the, the, back, uh, the high end of that uh, situation. But uh, again, you know, only CGA will only be utilized at a, as the most minimum we can. Uh, is there, is there a reason it takes eight months to transition? I'm just curious. Uh, I'd ask uh, the public works team, which I think is on, Randy and Hector, if you could answer that question. Thank you. Randy? Sorry. Yeah, that was a, that was a conservative uh, uh, estimate. It doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be eight months. What's the optimistic uh, estimate, Randy? Uh, a couple. Yeah. Two months? Okay. It was important right, that we Mayor? just wanted to make sure for the record, I'm sorry, Mr. Ware, uh, for the record that this is not a, just a cut the cut the cord and everyone disappears, uh, just like you would transition into a, a job in a new business, let's say. You, know, you want to be trained by the, or you know, brought up the speed by the, the prior people. So we're going to move, move CG off as soon as we can. Fair enough. Anything else, Vice Mayor? Yes, there. It's for the regarding the other um, contracts. Uh, so, um, page for the Nova contract on page one eighty four. Um, is there any additional scope of uh, services expected? Because it, it states those will be that that's charged separately. So I'm just wondering. Um, and actually, on page uh, one eighty five, mentions additional. Uh, investigative study. So I'm just wondering what, do we have expectations of how much additional we would be paying on this contract? Uh, specifically, most of those items will, you know, go through the budgeting process. Uh, anything above 25,000 will come back to the commission, but I'll give you an example of something, uh, a sneak peek uh, that you'll be seeing as a program modification come June. Uh, there's a 
a smoke test, I believe it's uh, through the on the water and sewer side that uh, Nova would be assisting with. Uh, the Public Works is putting together, and uh, just as an example. But uh, Randy, if you could just speak a little bit about uh, that, and I think we're still getting the cost together for that. But that would be an example of a, a periodic uh, services that would be done every you know year, every couple of years. Uh, that you wouldn't wouldn't be the normal weekly, monthly, quarterly, uh, annual kind of service. So that uh, smoke test, which uh, you know tests the system for any kind of, I believe, leaks or or illegal connections, would be an example. Uh, we've already spoken to them also about um, putting together a cost estimate and uh, a narrative document uh, for the primary water main replacement on Collins Avenue. I know I've spoken. To all of you throughout the your tenure, that that was a, a longer term or midterm. It's moved into the midterm uh, need for the town to replace the primary water line. We know it'll be multi million dollars, and we wanted to get a nice cost estimate and a detailed narrative of scope so that we can then uh, go after grants to get that. So that would be an example of something that is periodic. That wouldn't be you wouldn't want part of the retainer, uh, but you would pay on a time and materials basis. Um, could I just back up to the smoke test? So that that um, I know that's been done every year. So uh, was that included in the fee we paid Calvin Giordano, or was that an extra scope as well, just to have a uh, something to look at? Randy's going to answer that. Okay. The, that's on a five-year program. It's every year one and every year three. This this year will be coming up on on year three. Thank you. So it has to be done uh, for compliance. Okay, uh, thank you. And I just had one more question for the uh, Kimley Horn contract on page 196 and 199. It mentions the survey is not included. Uh, so do we have the survey already or is that something extra that we need to get? Uh, Randy, I, th I believe we have that. Uh, yes, we already much. have the survey. Okay, thank you then. You're welcome. And, Who else would like? One, one last thing. Are, are you happy with this change of, of uh, three companies versus one? I, I will just say um, I've worked as uh, earlier in my career before I was a, a government finance person or now an executive management uh, and government person. I was a civil engineer uh, and I've worked as a general engineering consultant. Um, when you're dealing with a client, uh, I've worked for the County Water and Sewer as a consultant. I've worked for the Miami Dade Expressway Authority as a consultant. It's always from, from a, a consultant perspective, it's always easier to have one point of contact. And from a client, a lot of times it is also uh, easier to have, have one. But in this particular case, you know, we've kind of, by, we've kind of cut this into very specifics where they probably don't touch each other's areas too much. So, you know, if you're going to pick up the phone to call someone about water and sewer, you know, it's really not stormwater and you know, it's not going to be GIS or what we call, or any kind of what we call general, you know, general city engineer kind of work. So we believe, and I've worked directly with public works on this for, I don't know, nine months, right? Uh, that we've been working on this, uh, finally getting this to fruition. And we believe that this is an approach that uh, it's good. Okay. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Anybody else? Comments on the resolution, Nellie, and then Charles. I just want to make sure that these companies or whoever's been tasked with the Abbott Avenue drainage problem comes up with a solution soon because our residents have been waiting for a very long time and they need a solution. Water should not be going into anybody's house, into anybody's garage. They're taxpayers just like everybody else, and they have a major problem over there worse than anywhere else in town. And that's my biggest concern. I want to see solutions and I want to see them soon because they need a response. Nobody should be going through this. I feel very blessed that, thank God on my block, there's no problems, but we need to find a solution. We need to find a solution ASAP. And that's Thanks. all I have to say. Anybody else? Charles? Yes, to follow up uh, with what Commissioner Velasquez just said, um, how I see that this indeed we are putting more money out, more money out there up front in retainer amounts and in retainer fees, but we're getting more companies and more brain power um, to contribute to um, to the town and and our kind of our Achilles heel in this town is drainage and rising sea levels, right? So we're not throwing away the institutional knowledge of CGA. They, they accrued that knowledge. They're passing it on. 
but we now have more people, more, engin more engineering firms with the specialization of stormwater retainer services, but also utilities engineering retainer. And then we have the GIS systems. And after talking with Jason and the town manager, um, these different companies are very strongly suited. Um, I love the fact that they came up with the engineering firms evaluation rankings, which is the sheet page 158. Uh, which um, I asked for a digital copy so we can read it more clearly and easily, but it shows that everybody has different strengths um, and, um, and some areas that they're, that they're not as specialized in. So as we move forward with our future and, um, and look at zoning issues and code, and we talk about raising the town up um, in different ways and other methods to address sea level rise, we're going to need these these experts in in the mix. You know, the answer may not come from within, but the more people that have institutional knowledge of us from expert firms, um, the better is how I see it. And um, and we're getting, you know, the brain power. What we really voted for, and our, what our vision is, at least as I understand it, is to get brain power from competing firms, but that are also grounded in the in the tradition. And the um, and the knowledge of engineering, which really shouldn't vary across firms too much, but um, but you know to have that sense of competition, you know already we heard with Nova as they're in their assessment of Abbott Avenue, um, some ideas that were outside of the box of what uh, CGA was looking at. Um, it's not to criticize anybody, but it's just that we need more insightful brain power um, to address the issue of our time and the future, which is flooding and rising sea levels. So, um, you know, Abbott Avenue is the test, and you're right, Commissioner Velazquez, that if we can't come up with a viable solution there, it's only a matter of time until the rest of us on different, on different avenues and on different streets are facing the same problem to different extents. So, um, you know, we need, to, we need to put the positions in place and the brain power in place to, to, uh, to make good decisions going forward with, um, you know, that are the ones that really matter. Thank you, Charles. Anybody else? Eliana. Hi, okay, so I wanna just, um, first of all, I think this is great that we have um, competition in different firms now with areas of expertise. I do, it, it's frustrating because sometimes at these meetings, I feel like nobody remembers, you know, and maybe I'm sure the vice mayor remembers, probably the only person that does because she was at every meeting, as was I. And the reason why we decided that we wanted to go away from single supplier model, which was Calvin Giordano, was because the town was, was in a bind. We had one supplier for all of these services. They named their price. They got every project, every meeting, every meeting that I went to for the last five years at every single meeting, they were giving that they were being awarded another 50, 40, 20 grand per meeting on different projects. We never saw the results of that. The flooding is still flooding. The town was not in such amazing shape that we saw results. So I, I know it's very convenient to be like, oh, let's all pile on Eliana and she's and that's why everyone quit. We all came on board because we needed everything in town hall needed a fresh coat of paint. And that was from the town manager on, okay? And I think we've done a really great job in bringing great people on board. And he's done an amazing job bringing new people on board as well. That's been very impressive. And shaking it up and bringing in these new consultants and these new, um, these new engineering firms is what the town needs because the prior version wasn't working. What we had before was just a single supplier that got every contract that was doing every single thing. And, and we were the ones sitting here going, wait, they get, they're the ones that were interpreting the code. Remember, they were also our town planner and they were also our engineer and they were every single thing. And we're sitting here saying that everything, you know, that they were doing with the town, with the code by interpreting 50 feet as 25 feet on the water, all these things didn't smell right. And so as a commission together a year ago, wherever it was, okay, we came in together to say, we want to change things up. So it's really not okay to rewrite history and to not remember that what's happening now is happening in the context of what's been building and going on for the past five years, if not a decade. And that's why we're here. So I don't know the ins and outs of engineering. I trust that Jason did a good job negotiating. I hope that this expertise can actually get some of these projects done. But unfortunately, as we've all learned, nothing happens quickly. 
And the, tr the reality is we're all going to be out of office before any of these things happen because that is the pace of government. That is unfortunately the pace of getting the approvals and the county approvals and the permits and the money and everything. So we come in here with gangbusters, with great ideas, but we have to be patient and we have to go through the correct process to make these things happen. Okay. Um, listen, I, 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 we, we, we are hiring these engineers um, primarily because we are desperately struggling to find options to solve the flooding problem. And we all agreed that was the most important thing. The reality of the situation is, is that everything is going to have to go up. Okay. What the, uh, what these engineers are going to find. And I think we've, we've all talked to them. They're going to be able to move the water out more quickly. However, it's not going to stop the initial flooding that's going into the houses. What's going to stop the initial flooding that's going into the houses is the plan that I put forward. Okay, and we've talked about many times. And as a matter of fact, we ha we've had with the manager and Randy and experts from Key West who've been doing a lot of house raising in New York and the shore where the houses got wiped out by Hurricane uh, Superstorm Sandy. We've had those people on the telephone and we've identified experts who are, we've already interviewed homeowners who have volunteered to be the first one to have their house raised. So what we're doing is we're having the architects look at that home. We're gonna come back to the commission and do this as a prototype. And we're gonna see how it works because the bottom line is, is we need to walk and chew gum at the same time. There may be, there may be a good answer that these qualified engineers can find for our residents, but we also need to be raising the houses up. There's no doubt about it. New construction houses are all being raised up. And I'm excited because we've had the opportunity now to talk to these guys and they've confirmed what I believed was possible. And I'm hoping that in the next month or so, I'm going to be able to bring you some very exciting news. Now, having said that, I think we've got a couple speakers that would like to talk. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you bring in the first speaker, please? Yes, Mayor, the first speaker is Jeff Rose. Jeff, please say your name and address for the record and your comments. Good evening, everyone. Jeff Rose, 8851 Proud Avenue. Mr. Mayor, obviously, I think we're on the same page raising the houses. Uh, Commissioner Velasquez, um, I'm in complete agreement with you. I mean, we shouldn't throw everybody under the bus. Sometimes we all don't agree, we don't disagree, and we have to work past it. But $43,000, being fiscally responsible, like you said earlier, it's a big number. So let's really hope that one of the these firms solved the Abbott Avenue drainage. Otherwise, would nobody wants to say it, but we would have been better off just sticking with CGA and saving $43,000 a year and just bite the bullet because if we're not gonna get any better services or a better solution, it is what it is. We're stuck and we're saving money, $43,000 a year. Um, since you guys briefly talked about it, uh, the kayak launch on the seawalls paying back $500,000. If you pretty much did that on all the other seawalls and built a dock, it's cheaper than buying a property on South Tower. Uh, south side of the, just think about that. You're probably paying three to $4 million now for a property, and then you got to build a dock anyway. You could have put them on all docks and seawalls and you'd be cheaper. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff, for Thank being you, Jeff. on time. Next speaker, please. Next speaker is Joshua Epstein. Joshua, please take your name and address for the record and your comments. Joshua Epstein, 9317, Dave Drive. I'm obviously no expert on this topic, but I do have common sense. I'd be more for it and I'd be happy to listen to it if there was a concise plan with this raising of the houses. There's no merit behind this plan. It's basically just putting balloons on a house and lifting it up. Where are the cars going? Where are the streets going? Are we getting submarines? So now we're gonna let the cars flood. What happens to the yards? What happens to the, the pets outside? The only way this would work is if our entire town was raised and that means the actual ground of the town. So unless you wanna dig it up and go like the movie up and stick balloons on it and hope it works, this plan is nothing but wasting money and throwing money out the door. In terms of CGA, everyone here got elected saying we're going to get rid of the contractors, we're going to get rid of the consulting, everything like that. If I recall correctly from being at the, all the meetings, Commissioner Velasquez voted for anything of getting rid of CGA. I don't remember her being outspoken or saying we should not do this. This was a commission decision. It takes four or three members of the commission to make a decision. It's not one member. One member does not do anything on their own. So putting blame on one member, no matter who it is, it's just, it lacks merit. It's not true. It's three members, not just one. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
we have, do we have a motion on the table right now? I think we do. Okay. Uh, are we ready to call the question? Vice Mayor? Yes, thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to say one thing because I think we went off topic a little uh, regarding the flooding because uh, my impression is that this is just a, a engineering contract for our uh, services that we're required to perform. It, it's really not about the flooding. That's a separate contract. So I, ju I just wanted to clear that up. Um, thank, thank you. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Yes, Mayor. Commissioner Velasquez? Yes. Commissioner Sauer. Yes. Mayor Castle? Yes. Vice Mayor Paul? Yes. Mayor Burkett? Yes. Mayor the motion carries. Thank you. Would you please read item D for us, Sandra? Sorry, Mayor, I couldn't hear you. Would you please read item D now? Is it 5D? Yes, Mayor. 5D, a resolution of the Town Commission of the Town of Surfside, Florida, approving a project agreement with KCI Technologies Inc. for utility undergrounding services for phase one preparation of utility coordination plan pursuant to the continuing service agreement for professional engineering services, providing for authorization and implementation, authorizing the expenditure of funds, and providing for an effective date on 5D. Thank you. Is there a motion to move that forward, Tina? Uh, yes, I have a motion to defer. Okay, is there a second to defer it? Eliana is yes, shaking I'm her head. Okay, so there's a motion to second to defer this. Any discussion? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so um, I have a few uh, issues. With, well, first of all, I wanted to, s I'll get to the issues with, with this first, okay? It's a few different things. There's, it has to do with our, um, the, ballot, the structure of the ballot question didn't include some of this. But aside from that, there's issues with this contract that I want to clear up because um, it doesn't include it. It's not um, it doesn't include everything. Okay, so on the cover page, we're told on page 201, we're told that um, the cost provided is not to exceed this amount, but it actually will. Um, okay, so on uh, and, and I should mention that on Reso 21. 2021-2752, we allocated $40,000 to HP, HPF Associates. In all honesty, I thought they were going to be providing us this information, but I can see that the cost would be higher. Um, we'd also allocated in Reso 2020 2743 $62,432 to FPL for the binding estimate, and that's the only thing we presented to the residents in the ballot question. But the real issues I'm having with why I need this deferred is because, um, first of all, in the town manager's report on page 83, it states that AT&T and Hotwire are not included in this estimate. And, um, but on page 211 and 212, it's, it mentions the, um, the project limits and it only goes up to 91st Street. And I don't know if this is a typo or if this is um, what they provided, um, but our town, you know, what happened to 92nd and 96th Street? This is not town wide. So I'd like to, that's the first thing I have is, is that a typo or is that the scope that was provided to us? Can someone answer that question for the vice mayor? Uh, thank you, mayor, vice mayor and commissioners. I'm going to ask uh, Paul Abbott, who is our uh, consulting project manager on this, uh, who did negotiate this out with KCI uh, to go over that with you. Uh, thanks. Go ahead, Paul. Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, the last question is, of course, it's a typo. Um, not having what you're referring to in front of me, I'm not sure exactly what you're referring to, but the proposal from KCI covers the entire single family residential area that I begin starts at 195th or starts at 95th street and continues all the way to the south limits of the uh, the, the, the the town uh, west of uh, Harding on to the uh, to the bay road so uh, that would just be a matter of clarification i think what folks are not completely understanding is number one, the HPF situation. We are there to be your owner's rep. We are there to police, to direct. Uh, I've often said this, our only job is to be sure that everybody else does their job. We aren't there to 
take all of the engineering documents and combine them into one set of documents. That's why we are retaining are recommending the retention of KCI. We get design drawings from all of the utilities, Florida Power and Light, Atlantic Broadband, uh, AT&T, and Hotwire has recently expressed a, uh, an interest in providing services, communication services through the single family residential area. All of these documents have to be assembled into one document to have a constructible set of, 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 of bidding documents to put out on the street to, to have the facilitation of an, a, conver a utility conversion project. This is only phase one, which takes the initial designs of the aforementioned utility companies and brings them into a document that we can then prepare a cost estimate, an accurate cost estimate for the community to consider to go forward with the utility undergrounding project. I know you've heard a lot of different words from particularly FPL about free services, free this, free that. Folks, there isn't anything free in the utility conversion process. Um, if we want to wait until 2047 and then possibly uh, avail ourselves of some partial undergrounding conversion, that's your choice. But the proper way to do a utility conversion is to get the designs from the utility providers, have a appropriate engineering firm, collaborate all of those designs and move forward with a utility conversion project based on the citizenry approving such. I hope that wasn't too lengthy. I hope I've addressed you. No, I think, I think that was good. Uh, Vice Mayor, you had the floor. Okay, thank you. So um, I'll just read into the record what it states on page 212, and it also says it on page 211. Uh, project boundaries are from Harding Avenue west to Biscaya Drive slash Bay Drive and from 88th Street north to 91st Street. Approximately 5.35 miles, uh, serving primarily single-family residences with two subaqueous crossings, and will be constructed in four phases. Um, so that that definitely needs to co be corrected. It's not the full town. Um, also, um, well, this one well, is minor. Vice Mayor, what you know? I'd like to know why it's not the full town. Can we ask that question? Is that okay? I was told it was a typo, but yeah, please. That's what I'm it, trying to find out as well. Madam uh, Vice Mayor and Mr. Mayor, it is a typographical mistake. Uh, Joe Gomez, uh, the principal in charge with uh, KCI is also on the phone, on, on, on the meeting with us. And I'm sure he would be glad to confirm that their proposal encompasses the entire single family uh, elements of this town, as I alluded to earlier, Harding to the Bay, South limits of town, north limits of town. So, so would it be fair family. to say, Paul, would it be fair to say that it encompasses all the areas where there is no undergrounding right now? Yes. That's correct, sir. Okay, very good. Well, listen, let's make any motion subject to that correction, of course. Uh, I see Mr. Gomez shaking his yeah. head. Yes. Yes, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor, did you have any more? Yes, I do. Um, Okay, also on page 214 is also another error under uh, task 1.05 utility coordination plans. It refers to uh, FPNL design from 2016 plans. Uh, we did not do one in 2016. I believe it was done in either uh, 2012 or 2013 because uh, in 2016 we allocated money for that, but we never uh, moved forward with that. So whatever plans they're looking at are not from 2016. Um, there's Mr. a couple Mayor, of things, excuse me. May, may I address that again? I apologize. I don't know the document you're referring to. Uh, I, their plans that they will be working from will be the latest plans, whatever they are on the plans that are provided by Florida power and light. Um, there's no relevance to a 2016 date to this proposal. Okay, well, um, also on page 214, it mentions um, 
that modifications not included have, are the right of way. Um, let me see, I didn't write all of it down. But I think you know what I'm getting at. The right of way such as landscape, irrigation, lighting, walls, fences, pavers, driveways, drainage, other private improvements. So where will we get this estimate from? If that is our, that is HPF's job. We will provide you an estimate for all of the things that are not included by the utility providers. All of the utility companies I've mentioned previously do not do restoration. They don't pave the roads. They don't repair um, private improvements with, such as driveways and sidewalks, et cetera. That will be the city's responsibility as part of the utility conversion project. Um, and we will include that in our comprehensive uh, estimate once we have the collaboration document from all of the other utilities. Okay, and also on, um, this is last one, on page 215, um, again, it's on the top of the page, additional required task, um, opinion of probable cost by others. So um, basically this is stating that um, this cost that we're to vote on of, uh, sorry, $289,580 is 50% of phase one. Uh, the, I don't know the cost of the other 50% or how we're gonna uh, determine what those costs are. Um, so this is only the half of it is what I'm trying to say it's uh, regarding phase one. And it also had mentioned on, on the previous, on page 212 that uh, this will be done in four phases. So at what point will we have the estimate that we bring back to our residents and at what cost, what final cost? Because we get little pieces everywhere and we don't have, you know, we don't know. You, I'm, I'm, I, I, for that, I apologize. It is not 50% of phase one, it's 50% of the entire collaboration document preparation. We don't need full construction documents to give you a comprehensive estimate of probable cost. It is not KCI's responsibility to prepare the estimate. That's what you hired HPF associates to do. So they, that's why it's excluded from their cost. They will give us the data that we will then use to prepare your estimate. The reason the project is divided into four phases, don't confuse those phases with the phases, the phase one work that you're receiving from KCI. The four phases are driven by Florida Power and Light. Florida Power and Light will energize the single family utility area that we're referring to in four separate phases, but that's all one overall cost estimate project for the city to consider. We will be doing it in four phases from the design standpoint, but you'll get one comprehensive project cost. Okay, if I could just read this paragraph because I, I, I think I'm reading it correctly. It says upon completion of the 50% uh, level plans in task 1.05 above, the town will prepare or arrange for a magnitude of cost estimate to be prepared by others, coordinating with FPL all participants to the undergrounding conversion and KCI to present to the town's commission for use in a public referendum vote to accept and proceed to phase two. So I, I read it as 50%. I, I just, you know, if someone else sees it differently, I, I'm happy to hear that um, because if I, I can. Yeah. It's, it's sorry, sorry, if I can try to sorry, try to clarify and Paul correct me if I'm wrong. What I think is was was trying to be uh, conveyed here is that when 50% of the way through KCI's work, there'll be enough information for uh, Paul's firm to prepare the cost estimate. When we talk about the cost estimate, what's, what's this going to cost? So when KCI is 50% done with their design, Paul would have enough data for him to compile who is that by the town, he's our representative, for him to compile the detailed construction estimate so that we would have that to come back to the commission and say, the project is gonna cost $18.27 million. While KCI continues with completing that that that, that uh, design work. So, so 50%. Have additional costs for Paul besides the 40,000 we've paid? No, the, 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 the fee that was approved for Paul includes the cost estimate. It includes the other 50% of phase one. 
There is, I'm, I'm sorry, that we're yeah. up in semantics there. There is no 50% of phase one. There's 50% of the project. Phase one constitutes 50% of the collaboration of the documents. It's not 50% of phase one. 50% is, it, phase one is 50% of the overall project. After we complete phase one, 50% of the design work, we will prepare you an estimate for the cost. You will then decide whether to proceed with the project or not. And then we will go into the final construction document preparation, which constitutes the other 50% of the entire undergrounding conversion project. Okay. One isn't divided into two phases, 50%. All right, thank, thank you, Paul. Let, let's get the other commissioners in and see if we can get a direction here. Go ahead, Eliana. Start the clock um, in three minutes, please. Okay, I support also uh, putting this off because the residents did not, not vote to spend half a million dollars um, on the ballot. That's why, that is why I voted to not put this question on the ballot, not because I'm opposed to undergrounding, because I was, I knew that there was no information in that. And it's sort of a toothless, it has no validity. And to spend $500,000, which is basically what we're doing here, this little thing at 1020 at night with 20 residents on the line, we're gonna sit here and spend $300,000 for someone to compile information. They're basically gonna do a design for us. We don't even know if the residents want to do this. Well, first thing we need to do is get, we have, we've already hired Mr. Abbott. We need all the money. We need to know what it's going to cost. Every single part of it, what the total bill is going to be, what the total tab is going to be. Then you put a residence and say, do you want to spend that? And then we spend it. We Because if we do this and we've spent $500,000 or a million dollars by the time we're done, before we even get to the residence, what are you going to say? Hey, we already spent a million dollars, but you don't, and now they vote no, they don't want it because it's going to be $20 million. Then... We're the we're the worst commission in history. We've wasted more money than any prior commissions. Okay, and that's not that's not a crown that I want to wear. So, the residents need to vote on this in an informed manner. I also think it's clear that the only person who reads the agenda very carefully is the vice mayor. So, kudos to the vice mayor for reading every line of every contract proposal in there because you know the rest of us just, I read through it as well. I didn't even catch that level of detail because she's been doing this for so long. She's familiar with it. You know, it's, it's, we have these things on the agenda and it's so easy to sit here and say, yeah, let's do this in our real world in our personal lives. If we have to buy a new dishwasher, it's three weeks of research and agonizing and staying yes. up and going to consume. But here we sit here and go, yeah, why not spend $300,000 for someone to come up with a design for something we may or may not do. So I think we need to be more cautious with the with the town's money, with the taxpayer money, with our money. It's our money as well. It's the town's money. It's my neighbor's money. And we need to wait to get all the information, go out to the residents and say, do you want this? And then let them vote for it. And then we can spend it all. But to do it and to spend this money, 500 here, 300 there. This is a $189,000 price tag. Voting on this right now is $289,000. When was the last time anybody here spent $289,000, right? Like never, never. So I'm not going to sit here and spend that my taxpayer town money on that when we don't even know, have all the information. We haven't even gotten the price tag back on all the other parts of this. And watching the last meeting, seeing how little. Okay, FPL thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, thank you. I'm gonna to go to I'm gonna to go to Nelly right now, but before I do, I just want to raise a point, Commissioner Salzar. You congratulated. Is it, is it, you congratulated. Is this your three okay, again, again. Yes, you got your again, three minutes, Eliana. Again, thank you. You're interrupting. You're just doing whatever you do all the time. The bottom line is, is we haven't heard from Commissioner Kessel. We haven't heard from Commissioner Velasquez. And you haven't heard from me about whether or not we've read the contract. So before you go saying that we're all neglecting our duty about reading of the agenda, which the inference is, is kind of insulting, I think you ought to listen to everybody talk first. Go ahead, Nelly. Uh, thank you very much, Mayor. Um, I am the most 
um, interested person in getting the undergrounding of the power lines. I brought this to the commission and everything, and I totally, and I first want to thank Tina for her great questions. They were very good questions. Thank you very much for that. And um, Eliana's comments are also very valid. I do not agree with spending this kind of money until we have a estimate of whether it's a 100% accurate estimate or a fairly close um, uh, estimate as to how much this is going to cost. Because if it is something that is I mean, that our residents decide that we don't want to do this because it's going to cost too much money, which at the end of the day, we have enough money to pay for whatever loan that we get without having to increase the taxes on our residents to pay for this, because that's why we have a surplus yearly of two to $3 million that we can use to pay whatever um, monies we borrow for whatever it is that we need to improve in, in our town. But to have to spend two, almost $300,000 to tell me how much this is going to cost, I have a problem with that as well. Um, and yes, I have read all this. And, um, but my main thing is that I don't think that this is the moment to spend this money. I think that we need to get that estimate, which is what we're paying for. And I can't see how we got an estimate back in 2013 for the undergrounding of the power lines, yet we did not spend $300,000, but now we're being asked to spend $300,000 to get that same estimate. So that kind of, that doesn't, that doesn't sit well with me. And like I said, I am the major advocate for this and I want to see our town undergrounded and I want us to go out there and get as much money as we possibly can get from everybody. But I don't agree with, with having to spend this kind of money as as of right now. Um, so that's all I had to say. Thank you very okay. much. Okay, any comment, Charles? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And thank you uh, to the Vice Mayor and the, my two fellow commissioners for raising some very, very valid points. Um, that was my feedback as well, is, is what is this total cost? What is the big picture? And where does this 289,000 fit in to the big picture so we can make wise decisions going forward. <clears throat> now, it does make sense that at some point the plans are gonna need to be consolidated into a master set. Um, but I, I agree with you, Commissioner Velasquez, um, at, that I don't understand why we can't take a look at what other towns have done, um, the, you know, the best practices and the public records um, of the other towns that have done conversions um, of different uh, success rates, by the way, um, and, and, and use that to get some big picture estimate of what this project will cost. I've tried to figure it out myself. Um, there's this 289, there's the, uh, the 6 million that would, that would be for the FPL report. Um, then there's, um, uh, I'm sorry, there's, uh, there's 60,000 60, that would be for the FPL re report and to get their schematics. And then um, for Atlantic Broadband, it's 7,000. And then the others might be another 40,000 to get all their schematics. And, um, and then we would add what we thought was the $6 million for the actual job, which was an estimate that FPL, FPL gave us prior. Um, but then pulling it all together, somewhere maybe around 20 million is what my notes say. But, um, you know, Mr. Abbott, welcome aboard. You know, we we have contributed what you asked, which is the forty-two thousand, I believe it was. You know, for you to um, to give us the the big picture of what the estimate will be, and I'm not comfortable. Um, I'm not comfortable spending the two hundred eighty-nine thousand dollars at this time and green lighting it either. Um, I'm actually pleasantly, refreshingly surprised that we're kind of all in in, in, uh, in um, unanimously saying this. Um, and it's not that I don't want to do it. Look, our voters voted 80%, 80 some percent. So, you know, um, I have not been um, head over heels um, in love with the idea of, of undergrounding the utilities to begin with, but I, I listened to the voters and I listened to Commissioner Velasquez, who's very impassioned about it. Um, and, uh, but this does make me look, look at the bigger picture, say, what is it that we're buying into 
and then go back to my original thinking, which is we're talking about raising the baseline of this town, whether it's to FEMA current levels or higher, right? That is constantly a moving discussion, the ground. So to bury things now at an expensive cost, I'm not so sure. If this was securing the above lines, way above, high and dry, and everybody loved that because they were aesthetically pleasing, which they're not, then it would kind of be a no brainer because that Charles. would be good for the duration. And I know my time is up, but uh, thanks for listening. Thank you. Um, Paul, how can we get some sort of estimate that we can, some sort of range that we can bring back to our residents without spending $289,000? How do we do that? I'm gonna give you an analogy. You don't estimate the cost of building a building without design documents. You don't estimate the cost of buying a car without what's included in the car and the options. Um, we okay, well, let me ask you, Is it, I get that, I get that. Um, is there some room in between not doing the $289,000 and trying to get some kind of estimate that's in a ballpark. For instance, we've, we've heard numbers before between 12 and $18 million. Okay. How can we, for instance, and, and again, I mean, can you, can you look at it by the square block? Can you look at it by the square foot? Can you look at it by the square mile? Is there some way that we could represent with some specificity a number to our residents that would be plus or minus 20%. Could you come within 20%? The more accurate information, the better estimate we would. We well, again, our, our residents, as Charles said, voted overwhelmingly to get this done. My job is, is to get this done. Now, the ballot question said, bring us back an estimate. It didn't say don't spend any money and bring us back an estimate. Okay. So, Let's, let's, you know, we need to get this done. I mean, there are people that don't want to see this done. Okay, I understand that. And they will make excuses. But my job is, is to get this done and get an estimate out so that people can make a decision in a very timely manner. So I need your help here. How can we do this? Um, and listen, if, if, if we need to do these plans, I understand if you do the plans, you'll have an exact number. I get that. Okay. How can you get a number that's pretty close and maybe not spend as much money on the front end? Because we're already going to spend $60,000 with FPL, correct? There's no option. We have to do the FPL design so we have even a basis to go forward with. Oh. Atlantic Broadband, AT&T, and Hotwire will follow the lead of... Okay, well, the question... So, 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 you know, I'm running out of time. The clock should be stopping while you're talking. But anyway, can you tell me if there's another option for us? We can prepare a broader based estimate based on the non-collaborated documents. I will tell you the error factor in preparing that estimate is profound compared to having the collaborated documents. But we'll give you an estimate based on the document on the information we receive from the utility companies. Okay, and and for instance, and, and you'll use all the years of your experience and all everything you know about cost to give us that number. Is that correct? Of course. Okay, oh, yeah. and 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 based, you know, and again, I'm not going to hold you to this, but how close could you get? Twenty-five percent. Thank you. Okay, uh, Nelly, you had your hand up first, and then I'll go to the vice mayor. Thank you. I, I, I'm sorry, but what upsets me about this whole situation is that we should have been told from day one when we hired Mr. Abbott to tell us this situation was going to come up prior to us getting an estimate that we would bring out to our residents to have them vote on this. And I, I, I feel like we're being hijacked right now. And I, I, I don't like it because this is not what we promised our residents. We brought this to the table because this is what we heard the most on a campaign trail. And I want to do this for our residents, but I don't want to spend additional money 
prior to having an actual estimate that we've already paid for because we've not only paid $60,000 to FPL, we've already paid you, Mr. Abbott, um, or I don't know if we paid him completely the 40,000, but it's approved that we're gonna pay the $40,000. So to me, it's like I'm paying for something, I expect to get what I paid for. And you guys need to figure out how you're gonna get it because this is what we approved and this is what we said we were gonna do. And I don't wanna hear that I gotta spend another $300,000 to find out how much this is gonna cost. It's not right. And it should have been told from the very beginning that this is what was gonna happen. And this was the process. Don't blindside me midway into the project because I have to come up to my residents and I have to tell them what's gonna happen and how this is gonna work out and how much money this is gonna be. So I can't go to the residents and tell them, oh, wait a minute, by the way, we spent $300,000 to find out that this is way too expensive and that we might not want to do it in the long run. Okay, so, Nelly, I, Nelly, we're getting late now. I'm going to drop the time now. We're going to keep going with questions. It's got to be one minute. Go ahead, Vice Mayor. Okay, um, I might need more than that. What, what's what's really at the core? Okay, just in, in Mr. Abbott's defense, he, he is doing his job. We do need to pay this money to find out where the boxes will be located. Uh, how it's going to look. This is an important part of the project. What's at the core issue is that we didn't present this in the ballot question. I, ha I have it from the town website uh, on my iPad. On the ballot question, I can read you the ballot question. And on the information page that we provided, can you see it? This page on the town website, uh, the ballot question was very simple. Do you favor the undergrounding of Surfside's power lines and other utilities in order to improve safety and promote sustainability and resilience at the an estimated cost of 16 million to 18 million. And if you look through all the FAQs, the only expense we refer to is the 60,000 for FP&L. And the issue is that we will need to spend this money to bring back to the residents what they wanna know. The question is, we didn't put this forward to them when we did the ballot question. And I feel that uh, in all transparency, to be transparent with our residents, we need to let them know this cost and see if they still want us to proceed. And I'm willing to proceed so long as we have that from the residents, but I, I can't do it without them knowing because we didn't present it properly to them. That was a fault of ours, not Mr. Abbott's. He is doing his job and, and he's coordinating it and that is the cost. And that cost is not gonna disappear. Uh, it, it's gonna be there. We just have to know, is that what our residents want us to spend? Well, he just said that he could give us a 20. All right, hang on a second. Ballpark. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Oh. We're going to go in order. Okay. Does anybody else want to comment before I open the floor? Okay, go ahead, Charles. Um, yes, I, um, all I'll add is, um, you know, we really need to understand what the big picture is and what all the components are going to be. Um, and, um, and I agree that I also felt a little bit blindsided. blindsided. That um, that this two hundred and eighty nine thousand wasn't really on the radar um, as something that we would be spending or possibly even spending. So if there's more that's going to come down the line, like contingencies for um, for even after the two eighty nine, that there's going to be a contingency because the two eighty nine is going to have to be tweaked all over again. That needs to be put on the table as well. Um, otherwise, um, you know, I don't have any further questions. Of my colleagues. Oh, okay. Let's go ahead and uh, bring in the public for, uh, we'll go one round of one minute. We'll see if uh, that's adequate. Madam Clerk, first speaker. First speaker, Gabby. Gabby, please take your name and address for the record and your comments. Can you hear me? No, we we got a bad connection. Hello. Okay, much better. Hello. Much better. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Thank you, guys. Um, okay, <sighs> Mr. Abbott, I've been reading your documents since the last time that Surfside looked at undergrounding. Back in 2013, I've read every agenda packet. I just have a question. Last time around, you came up. We always okay. Listen, we did the referendum to get a feel from the residents if they're interested enough in undergrounding or not to then investigate what the cost would be, okay? So we all knew that, guys. We knew we were gonna have to spend the 60K and we knew we were gonna have to figure out how much the other stuff costs. Now, I highly respect Mr. Abbott. He's a professional. He's done this a million times. 
So I have a question, Mr. Abbott. When you did this in 2013, you came up, and I remember because I was at the meetings, you came up with a very precise number for all, I call it the everything else estimate, right? Everything that's not power lines, street lamps, uh, cable, yada, yada. Last time you did that, and I don't remember the town spending that kind of money. Maybe I'm wrong, but besides our own town, you you do this in various communities. So how did you do it? Um, may I ask one more question? I don't know. Well, Deb, we got to stick to the one minute. We'll come back around. I think we okay. need to come back around. Okay. So. If you could yeah. please answer that question. I'd All appreciate right. it. And All there's right. no bigger advocate than me. So I know. Do you, do you have an answer to that question, Mr. Abbott? I do. Um, in every other community that I've worked in, we have always done the collaborated documents back in 2010 through 2013 when we prepared the initial estimate for Surfside, we did not have collaborated documents and therefore the estimate and the project was set aside at that time because of the level of data inaccuracy. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Next speaker is Jeff Rose. Jeff, please say your name and address for the record in your phone. Jeff Rose, 8051 Fraud Avenue. I just want to say every commissioner brought up great points tonight. Uh, every commissioner and the mayor and vice mayor as well. Um, I just feel like we're at the point right now that it's a tough situation. Like the, the commission got elected. It seems the residents voted for it. We, Nobody wants to spend the money, but I'm just going to speak from it um, from a contractor like I am myself as a perspective. Material costs now is a lot more expensive than it was six months ago. And Mr. Abbott's probably going to tell you the same thing. So without him getting that document, it's going to be hard to put some numbers together. And it's almost like we're asking him to build a house without giving him architect plans, any bids from the subs. So in his defense, you know, we all want to go into this. And it seems like the commission wants to do it. But if he doesn't have the right information, we're not going to be able to put the right numbers together. And at some point, you know, we elected you guys and, and you guys are going to do this. And it's either going to move forward with, with that document and get it elected or it's going to feel like it's going to get kicked down to the next elected official. So I feel like we're at the point right there. If we want to do it, the money's going to have to be spent. Otherwise, it's probably not going to get a real estimate. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Next speaker is Joshua Epstein. Joshua, please state your name and address for the record and your comment. Joshua Epstein, 9217, Village Act. For everything this commission um, disagrees on, it's great to see everyone mostly agreeing on this. I think it's not what the residents voted on to spend. It's probably going to be close to a million dollars at the end. We didn't know about this before. I would not be surprised if it gets to 500,000. I mean, it's already at 500,000 close to. It gets to a million dollars. For example, I mean, I was putting doing the house analogy that was brought up by um, Mr. Paul Abbott. You don't, when you have to get architecture plans to buy the house, but before you spend $300,000 on architecture plans, you have to find out how much that house is going to cost you. Otherwise, you're spending, you're wasting that $300,000. So it's a process that we have to go through. I think we've been blindsided by this. We didn't know. I mean, I, I didn't know personally that this is what was going to have to happen. But I think towards the end of this process, if we spend a million dollars and then the residents say, well, this is too expensive. This is not what we want. This will be the biggest squandering of money of any commission that I can remember. This, All of you are, will be voted out for that. I think a million dollars you can do a lot with, $750,000, $500,000 even, you can do a lot with. I stand online at Publix for a $1 coupon for them scanning it 20 times to make sure it goes through. This is $300,000. Let's think this through. Let's not just rush into this and let's make Thank sure the you. residents know what they voted for. And Next speaker, listen. please. Next speaker is Horace Henderson. Horace, please say your name and address for the record and your comments. Good evening. Horace Henderson, 9195 Collins. Uh, um, I believe that if we can get Mr. Abbott to give us an estimate kind of like he did the last time of 16 million to 18 million, granted he just said 25%, so let's push that out to 13 million to 20 million. If he can say that it's gonna be roughly around that, I think we can go back to the voters and ask them if they're interested in that. If he if he can only give us a, 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 an estimate of 5 million to 30 million, then that's probably not sufficient, right? Um, but so if we can do that, then we can ask them if we wanna spend the 500,000 to get the actual estimate and then go out and spend the 20 million for it. I think it's I think it's that easy. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, who wants to go first for a minute? Final comments. Let's get a direction here, Commission. Okay. Eliana. Um, I 
I think there's a, a lot of other costs that are here as well, because it's 60,000 for FPL. We have to pay every single utility to get an estimate. So we have to pay, I think Atlantic Broadband for the cost estimate design, like I think that was 7,400. We have to pay at and for cost estimate design. We have to pay Hotwire for cost estimate design. I mean, this is this is like $500,000 of stuff before we've even found out what this is really going to cost us. And then, you know, like you wouldn't hire an architect to design, you know, your plans for a house that you don't own, which is basically what we're doing here. I think that we need to go to voters with a substantial number, an actual plan, and um, before we spend that kind of money, I just don't feel like it's it's you know I'm I'm agreeing with Commissioner Velasquez and I'm I'm and, and everyone else pretty much. This is just not. I don't think that voters thought that this is what we were doing. I also am a little bit concerned because I listened to the FPL presentation at the last meeting and there were still some questions um, about whether Thank or not you. our lateral. Thank you. Had even it, save save your thought for the next go round, please. Who would like to go next, Nelly? Uh, yes. Um, I feel it is, it's, you know, it's not something that I would agree to as of right now, because we can come back and I, I really would like to see a ballpark of whatever it is this, this project is going to cost. And I want to see some financial numbers. I want to see how much it would cost to to borrow this money. I want to know how much time it would take us to pay this back and how much we would have to pay on a monthly basis. I want to know all these things so we can go to our voters and our residents that uh, voted for this and give them an accurate, well, not 100% accurate, but a, a, a somewhat close estimate as to how much this is going to cost and how this is going to impact every single resident in this town that lives in the single family homes. So okay. Nelly. that's something, if, oh, sorry, I'm out of time. Yep, Vice Mayor, go ahead. I, I think Commissioner, Commissioner Kessel was first. Okay, Commissioner Kessel, I beg your pardon. Good. No problem, sir. <clears throat> um, so in terms of going forward, um, just some ideas, uh, perhaps there are other companies that could do this work as well that are qualified and we could go to bid on it and it might be lower than 290. Um, also just sitting down and doing the big picture rough timeline <clears throat> along with estimates and milestones of, of project costs uh, that would really be beneficial for me and I think the commission because we haven't really seen that. So if it was, this was one primary decision made in the greater context, it would be easier to swallow. But right now I, I'm not comfortable or familiar enough with the greater context. So those are my two tips on how the town can move forward. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Yes, so I, I think the way to move forward is we need to present the cost to find out the information the residents want to see if they want us to proceed based on these costs because we do need to do this study. I don't know that bidding it out is gonna make much difference in the cost. Um, the, the issue I have is not so much, I mean, yeah, the cost is substantial that I don't wanna, um, you know, make that decision to expend that without, you know, because we didn't present it to the residents. So I think it's important we present it to the residents. This is what it costs to find out the information as to where each box will go and how this is gonna look. And if they if they want us to do that, then then that's okay because, you know, we just didn't present the ballot question properly. They didn't have all the information. And if we present all the, you know, the information that is needed to get to where we can get the right estimate, then, uh, you know, we, we can see if the voters have changed their minds or not. And if they haven't, then we proceed with this expenditure, um, but not right, not tonight. It's, that's why I motion to defer. It's not a okay. no, it's a Thank not you. now. Okay, well, uh, I'll tell you what folks, um, the not now, position and the defer position and the wringing of the hands because we're going to have to spend a little money to get the answer that the voters told us that they want is a political decision we're all going to have to make. As far as I'm concerned, the voters of this town want to put their power lines underground. And what, what's happening here is there are excuses, in my opinion, being made to delay and defer 
and trip this project up. And, and I, I believe, listen, I might be wrong, but I believe those that are trying to trip this thing up will be held accountable because the bottom line is, is the right answer is to tell Mr. Abbott to go back and get the best possible price to get the number that we need and bring it back at the next meeting, okay? Uh, maybe it maybe it's going to be 200000 but Mr. Abbott, you could tell your subcontractors that we're darn close to losing this deal, but as far as I'm concerned, we need to move forward and get those power lines on the ground. Okay, now, do we want to go around again, commissioners? Yeah. Is, yes? Yeah. Yes? Okay, well, if we're going to go around again, I see we've got a couple of speakers too, and I know Debbie had some more to say, so... I'm going to open up the uh, the uh, phone line for another minute for each person, and then we'll go around and we'll we'll chat about it a little more. Okay, first speaker, please, Sandra. Heavy to Maravilla, please say your name and address for the record and your comments. Okay, Deborah Maravilla, 9108 Abbott Avenue. I agree 100% with what the mayor just said. Okay, we need to be realistic. Uh, I understand that we didn't expect this, but Mr. Abbott, you are about you are very close to losing a deal here <laughs> so it is wise to definitely get the best ballpark estimate you can okay and then we take it to the people once we have the fpl with that okay because as i also agree with jeff rose okay when you're in construction realize you really can't be tossing around the ball like this now i totally respect the fact that yeah we want to give the um, residents the best information possible, but guys, you can't get uh, you can't get the details you want or the ballpark you want out of the sky. Okay, so with all the respect to my heart for my fellow residents, if they want to get a ballpark, and I know they want this because they voted for it, I agree with the mayor and with Jeff Rose, and I hope that you guys Deb. try to get Abbott to give us the best, Thank cheapest. You. Thank best you. price he could get for a ballpark. Thank, Deb, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Next speaker is Joshua Epstein. Joshua, please state your name and address for the record and your comments. Joshua Epstein, 9 through 17, Bay Drive. I just want to say, I don't know if I was being referred to or anyone. I know I'm personally for undergrounding of the power lines. I know I've spoken to my mom, Commissioner Stalls, over this before. She's also for undergrounding of the power lines. So I'm no, I don't, I'm not here to make excuses. I don't think anyone's here to prolong this process or make excuses. You're, we're here to, everyone, I think, is here to do it based on what the residents want. This is a resident, I mean, this is resident-led. Residents are the one that are going to foot the bill for this at the end of the day. It's going to be taxpayer dollars that are going to pay for it. I think there's two options. You can either get the ballpark estimate, see what the range that we're given is. If it's 50, if it's between 5 million and 30 million, like Horace Henderson said, then we could say, okay, now we're going to go back to the voters, see what they say, see if they want us to go forward with spending 500,000 to a million dollars on getting those exact prices. Or if we're given between 15 million and 18 million dollars, and we could say, well, that's well, that's, that's, that's a that's close a enough range. So then at that point, we can go to the voters with that 15 to 18 million, or whatever that smaller range is, and have them approve it at that point, then go forward with it. But unneeded expenditures before they've even been approved, squandering money, it, that's just not the way to go about this. And there are better options to go about this. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Next speaker is Jeff Rose. Jeff, please say your name and address for the record and your comments. Jeff Rose, 8851 Frat Avenue. Uh, like I said before, I think this is the point where we're either going to have to vote or not to do it to spend it. But I did have another question. Um, and I guess this is a direct question for the mayor, or sorry, the vice mayor, uh, Mr. Gustin Velasquez. Um, if you said it's going to go back to the residents potentially, are we talking about a survey? Are we going back to a whole other ballot question? Because if we're going back to another ballot question, I feel like that's kicking it down the curb again. So I just wanted more clarity on when you say, hey, we're going to have to spend half a million dollars just to get the number. What are we talking about? A survey or a ballot question? Because if we're going to a ballot question, I mean, I feel like it's just waste a lot of energy, time, and wasted by a lot of people. So I just want some direction on when you say we're going back to residents, what do we mean by going back to residents? How we know we're going to have to spend it eventually to get the real number from Mr. Abbott. So how are we going to get that? clarification from residents. That's really what I'm looking for. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff. Mr. Rose is exactly right, because otherwise we're going to look like the gang that couldn't shoot straight. So I was writing that question down right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, so again, are we going to go around for another minute? Tina, go ahead. You're first. Well, I, I just would like to answer Mr. Rose. He directed it at, at um, three of us. 
So um, my feeling is that, you know, whatever way works, I don't really want to go back to a ballot question because once we, if we, if we get the decision from residents to spend this money, we'll still have to come back for a ballot question sense. Um, perhaps the manager could write in the Gazette uh, and maybe a survey would be the good way, the right way to go about this. But I, I feel that I need more input from residents to know if they want us to expend this, this money to, to find out the information that they want because it, we didn't put it on the ballot question. It should have been, but we didn't know this is what the costs are. Okay, Nellie. Uh, yes, I just, you know, to me, it's, I think what we need to do is get that ballpark, whether it's 25% off or 10% off or whatever the number is, there's got to be a way to get that number. Because yeah, I don't, I don't disagree that it, eventually we will have to spend this money, but I think it has to be spent after we know what we're going to bring to the residents to ask them to, listen, we, want, we need to borrow this amount of money. And that's that that is really where this whole thing needs to go. And, and we need to have the exact um, maybe not an exact number, but a very close number. So he's saying that he's going to get 25 percent close. I think that's good enough for me. And I think it's good enough for our residents. We run the numbers. We run the interest rates. We run the whole thing. We run it by our town. But to do wait and do surveys and all this other stuff, I don't think that that's the way to go because we're going to be wasting an enormous amount of time that we could be using on getting Thank you, on Thank the you. ballot and the correct question to get the money Thank borrowed. You. Thank you. Charles? Um, we actually did a great job with the ballot question. <laughs> we said 16 to 18 million. Um, it was a succinct, clear question. And it was, you know, we, we decided upon that question more than six months ago. That had to be done months before the election, if you recall correctly. So, so the fact that we're even talking about 20 million as a, as a, as a rough estimate, that's not that far off 16 to 18 million. We could have said six to seven because that number was tossed around. So I, I, this doesn't need to go back to, the, to a ballot question in my mind. We just need to have a, a, an estimate that's something that's, re that's reliable. The 16 to 18, we were kind of taking a stab in the dark. Now we're up around 20. Um, I am not comfortable if this, if this comes in at 30. You know, a couple of people said, oh, if, this, if the rough estimate is anywhere from five to 35, yeah, that's, that's huge. And, uh, and if we guesstimate it 18 and it's 30 or 35 or 40, I have a problem with that. Thank you, Charles. Anybody else? Eliana? Um, I, I think that one of the things that residents complain about all the time, right, is the high water bills. Well, how'd the water bills get so high? Because prior commissions decided to borrow a ton of money without consulting residents. And for the next 20 years, we've got crazy water bills. So, you know, when we sit here and we complain about it and everyone complains, wow, oh my God, this happened. Why is my water bill so high? Money doesn't come out of nowhere. Um, you know, I, I, if this is something that the residents want to do, I agree, we need to get the, the real number before we start spending this kind of money because we're going to look like, you know, with egg on our faces when we spent all this money and then the ballpark comes in at 30, $35 million and the residents are like, no chance. We'll we'll wait our 15 years to get it done. Um, I just think it, I'm not comfortable spending this right now at all. I want to wait till we get. We haven't even gotten the, the answer back from FPL yet about what it's going to cost. We haven't gotten any of these answers back yet. We should be able to get these. Anyone with a calculator can add them all up, right? You get everyone's estimate, you add them up, and you say this is what it is. Okay. You don't Thank have to you. Spend three Thank you, Commissioner. Mr. Abbott. Sure. What can you do for us, given what you've heard tonight? What are give us our best option, given what you've heard tonight? One thing I want to say is the money you're debating about spending tonight, you're going to spend regardless, whether you spend it now or you spend it later. Well, we're not going to spend it regardless because if the voters don't want to buy into the big number, we would. That's the argument. We wouldn't have to spend it. So. What we need, what we need to do is our first step, our first obligation is to give the voters a, a real number that they can expect to be responsible for. Okay, the comparison a second ago about the high water bills is not applicable because the voters weren't asked. We we are the ones that put in place the provisions for asking voters every time money is borrowed. So that's what we need to do. And I need you to give me some options now, given what you've heard. 
the first step is to receive from Florida Power and Light their binding cost estimate. As you well know, we are still talking to them about their schedule and when they will provide us that estimate. Okay, that's good. I, I just don't want to, that's good. Now, then what happens? What can, what can we do to put the numbers together? How can we do that effectively? At, at the same time that we're working with Florida Power and Light for their binding cost estimate, we will work on our historical data from the seven other communities that we have done these utility undergrounding projects in and combine an S and, and prepare an estimate. For That's right. And and when, when you combine that estimate, will you be able to say with some level of confidence that it will not exceed your outside number by a certain amount or better yet, maybe what you would do is give us a range and say, the, the best the best option would be you know we could get it done for 12 million but in the worst case scenario we'd be at 17 million could you give us something like that no sir i will give you an estimate based on the data that we have re that we have available to us and it will be within as close an option as i can possibly get i would tell you i think it'll be within 25 percent thank but you okay so you'll give us a range that'll be fine so we'll have the high number we'll have the worst number and we'll have the best number, okay? And those two numbers will probably be 25% apart, correct? I, I, that's not what I was intending to say, but I will give you the best possible number I will give. It won't be a range. I'm gonna give you a number based on the data that I have available to me from the utility no, companies. No, but, but we also, yeah, that, that best number, but what, what I was saying, as you said earlier, that, you know, you would, you know, be within a range of 25%. So you're, are you going to say that the number that you're going to give us could be 25% higher or lower? Yes, that it could have an error factor in it of 25%. That's what Either I, way? Yep. Either way? Either way. Okay, fair enough. And when can you have that number for us? I can't have it until I get the FPL information. The FPL and when, 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 when do you think you get the FPL information? I don't have that data from them, sir. You know. No, I know, I know. But but is that I was, was that the, was that the issue that you and I were going back and forth on where they were? Yes, not, sir. They were being difficult. Yes, sir, and they are. Okay. Continuing we'll, to be difficult. well, then we will uh, continue to work on that. I'm optimistic that we will be able to get you the information you need. Now, the question is: is once you get the information you need, how long will it take you to turn that around and bring that back to the commission? If FPL were to give us the information within the next four months, you will. You no, will, no, you go ahead, Mr. Abbott. You will have a cost estimate within the next five months, but I cannot. I will be running a parallel route based on my current historical data, but the FPL design dictates the cost of this project. Okay, there, will you be. Everybody and, else you is know, the tail and, on the dog. And again, I, I think we all are depending upon you to interface with FPNL and make sure that what they're doing is in our best interest, correct? Of course. Excellent. Okay. Then um, does anybody, uh, Sandra, you had your hand up? Are you, we're at the end of the meeting, correct? Yes, Mayor, I need a motion to extend it to 11. Okay, well, I don't, I don't know that we're going to extend. I think that this is probably a good place to end the meeting. Um, we need a motion to extend for 10 minutes, please. I make the motion to extend. Any second? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, 10 minutes. So, Jason, go ahead. If I can ask, based on everything that I'm, I'm hearing here, uh, you know, uh, Paul will, will work forward uh, to pr produce a, uh, a the best cost estimate he can based on the data he has. The only other point that we'll ask then is, um, and it kind of pulls in the next item, which was the budget amendment, which is becoming a moot point uh, for the uh, KCI design coordination work. And that'll kind of be put on the shelf to when the commission decides to, for us to come back and, and do that work. That work will need to be done, but we'll, we'll push that off. The only element I do ask is if we can get the motion to approve uh, the, the part of the budget amendment related to paying um, Atlantic Broadband for 7159 to amend the budget to uh, for their design costs, uh, we paid the. Well, uh, are, why why would we do only Atlantic Broadband? That's just what we have right now. Paul is still working with uh, Hotwire and Atlantic um, AT and T, um, so we, we, we okay, need but, to get. Uh, but but but, but, but Paul, is it possible that you might be able to get a better price from those other two, and then go back to Atlantic Broadband and say, "Hey, look, the other guys are giving us a better price. Will you drop your price?" 
Atlantic Broadband is going to be the lowest price of them all. I would think that AT and T's estimate will probably be double of. Uh, well, don't don't say that. Don't listen. Let's not let's not go out and have you <laughs> give them ideas. Um, you you go and get them, and you get the best deal that you can for us. Okay. Um, and do we have to pay Atlantic Broadband right now, Jason? Is that urgent, or can we do it all at the same time once uh, Paul is able to negotiate all three? Uh, Paul, I'll ask you, but I believe that um, just like the FPL, having the more detailed information is going to give a little bit better. Paul? They, they will not begin their design effort without the uh, response to their invoice. That's just the way the utility companies. Okay, and you need that in order to do your ballpark? Yes, sir. Okay. Can I, I have a motion? motion. I make Is there motion. a second? Are you are you seconding the motion, Eliana? Or do you just want to I have to a talk? question. Okay, well, hang question on. I'm at, no, there's a mo that you're out of order. There's a motion on the table. Is there a second to that motion to fund Atlantic What's Broadband? The okay, so Atlantic Broadband um, to give us their estimate for the utility. Okay, go ahead. Thank Hold you. on. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. I think Hold Sandra on. is trying to. Okay, stop. Stop, everybody. Sandra, I'm go ahead. I, I have to step in, Mr. Mayor. Atlantic Broadband is not giving us an estimate. They are giving us a design. Got it. Got Thank you, Paul. They do not provide Bye. estimates. Thank you, Paul. I got it. Sandra, go ahead. Mayor, sorry, with all due respect, we cannot have a motion when we have a motion on the table to defer the item 5D. Oh. Okay, right. We have a motion to defer. Um, let, let's go ahead and... I'll um, second Tina's motion. Well, okay. Oh, I so think Eliana had already seconded, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, forget yeah, it then. Yeah, okay. So call the question on that motion to defer, please. Okay. Commissioner Castle? Yes. Commissioner Velasquez? Yes. Commissioner Salasauer? Yes. Vice Mayor Paul? Yes. Mayor Burkett? No. Mayor, the motion carries. Okay, now, Nelly, you want to make your motion to, to do the Atlantic broadband portion? Can I read the okay. title of the resolution, please? Yes. It's a resolution of the Town Commission of the Town of Surrey, Florida, approving budget amendment number seven to the fiscal year 2020 2021 budget, providing for implementation and providing for an effective date in 5E. Okay, I mean, Mr. so there's Mayor. a motion. I'm sorry, go ahead, Jason. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the What's in there are two two elements. One is the KCI cost, which is now deferred, and the Atlantic Broadband. So it would be amending the resolution to only uh, approve the budget amendment for $7,159 for Atlantic Broadband. Thank you. Okay. that is that your motion, Nelly? Yes, correct. Okay. Is there a second to that? Because that's a piece of the puzzle, folks. That's going to help us get to an estimate. Press that red button. Okay. No. Is there a second? I'd like to speak, not second. Okay. Well, but we're, we're, I'm looking for a second. I'm going to pass the gavel to the vice mayor, and I'll second the motion. Now you can speak, vice mayor. Okay. So I, I mean, I think that you know we need to also move forward with this KCI, but I think we need direction from our residents because we didn't put these costs before them. We didn't put the Atlantic broadband costs before them. Um, it's a matter of do they want to move forward with this? Because we did give a ballpark. We gave the ballpark, uh, um, you know, up to 18 million. So I don't, you know, I don't know if Mr. Abbott can weigh in on how far off that might or might not be. Um, they approved that ballpark, but they didn't approve expending, you know, half a million to find out the actual cost and the actual placement of where things will be. But that's what they want to know. So, you know, in order to move this forward, we need to know if the residents want us to proceed with these expenditures. And, and that's the core of the issue. And, and that's, you know, I, I don't think it has to be a ballot question, but somehow we have to get some kind of feedback from our residents to know if they want to proceed. Okay, Paul, can you answer that question for the vice mayor? And then we'll, go, we'll continue to go around. We've only got a couple of minutes. I apologize profoundly, but Madam Vice Mayor, you're going to have to rephrase your question. I didn't grasp it. I, I don't know that it was really she, a question. It was well, I think I think what you said, Tina, was you wanted to know you, you want the ballot question outlined an eighteen million dollar outside number potentially, and you asked whether or not you, Mr. Abbott thought that was doable. 
No, it, yeah, if he, how far off he thought we were with that. Okay, that, I think. That's, that's, that's what I just said. Go ahead, I, Mr. Abbott. I will not, I, I can't answer that question. I wasn't involved when that number was put together. Um, I don't know if you have a $12 million project or a $25 million project. It's not a $5 million project. It's not a $30 million project, but I can't validate $18 million. All I, right, I, that's I, fine. Yeah. That, that answers the question. Charles, go ahead. Yep, um, my only comment about the 7,000 for Atlantic Broadband is that uh, Mr. Abbott and everybody seems to agree that the FPL is the dog that wags the tail or vice versa. And that might be coming out in the next few months. So I don't see what the rush is to get Atlantic Broadband, which is just secondary. So that's why I don't think this is a real hot issue right now. But it is, Charles, it, it's part of the process. It's part of the process excluding the $289,000. It's, it's another piece of the puzzle that will help Mr. Abbott get to where he needs to be. Eliana? Okay, I think that this should get deferred along with the first one because this is the same thing. Let's get the FPL number first because that's the biggest portion and, and then find out whether we see what that looks like and then find out from residents if they want to spend all this other money because I have, I actually have a question for Mr. Abbott. I watched the last meeting with all the FPL questions. And I didn't understand. Do we know if the, our laterals, when they put the conduits in, if they did it correctly to, in order to put the uh, other utilities in there or not? Because that impacts whether we have to dig up the street or not. And so that will directly affect the cost. And I don't think that was answered at last month's meeting. Do you know the answer to that question? Mr. Mr. Abbott? Mr. Stokes has confirmed to me that conduiting was put in adequate to provide crossings. It does not eliminate the necessity to excavate either in the right-of-way or the roadway. The roadways, the right-of-way, the curbs, the driveways, your entire city is going to be disrupted to do a utility conversion project. Okay, listen, guys, Okay. We're, we're, we're then, running out of time. Your, your, your still, minute is up, Eliana. We're running out of time. No, I had, your, your, minute I have is, enough, your minute is up, Eliana. Um, more seconds left. You're, Mr. You're, you're in, your minute, again, you're out of order. Again, you're out of order. You're not respecting the process. I, Everybody gets one minute, and I'm not going to argue I, with you. Okay? So stop. Anyway. Seconds left. And you, and you keep talking. And you keep talking. Because I had 15 seconds left. And you keep arguing too. I have another question. Okay, the clock was over. Okay. Anyway. No, it wasn't. Guys, okay, you argue. You know, I, I, I just don't want to play that game. So I think we're I'm done for tonight. No, you know, again. Please, please, stop. Okay. I think we're done for tonight. Um, there's a motion on the table, though. It's, it's been moved and seconded. It's for the funding of the, uh, it, it would, it's a digital part of the funding in order to move this process forward. Let's have the, the vote on that and then we'll call it a night because I don't think we're gonna get any further on this. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll on the question of whether or not to fund the $7,500 to Atlantic Broadband for them to provide their plans in order for us to move the ball forward? Commissioner Castle? Yes. Commissioner Salsauer? No, I would defer it. Commissioner Velasquez? Yes. Vice Mayor Paul? Uh, no. Mayor Burkett? Yes. Okay, Mayor thank you everybody. Can can I get a uh, motion to- uh, Motion to adjourn. Okay, I is there a second? second? On that one. All right, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, all right, Good night. thank you all. Good night. Thank Great you, night. Charles. Thank you, Charles. Thank you, Charles. <laughs>